Hello and welcome to Full Starts Podcast, everybody. The only podcast. So this month I'm hosting and uh, I'd like us to go around the room, everybody. Introduce yourself. Yeah, and who, describe who are you? I, give I'm me hosting. A, give me a chance. Will you give me a chance? No. We're going to go around the room. Chance. We're going to introduce ourselves and describe one of our favourite body parts on ourselves. I'm Lewis, not too hairy, apart from the patch, just under and around the hole. That's my belly. Dan, go on. I've introduced you, but what's your favourite body you part? You have. My favourite body part is probably the appendix, because it can kill you. <laughs> I like I like my right ear lobe, and... Um, oh, yeah, my name's Ash. Describe um, it. Describe to me your right ear lobe. Pink. Sometimes it's red. Sometimes it's purple. Um, it's, Lovely. That's yeah. us. Dan, theme tune. <laughs> <laughs> the American <laughs> national anthem. <laughs> the hail to the chief. <laughs> right. Uh, as you guys might recall, and and the last episode, the rule this episode is no swearing. Yeah, yeah. I'll take I'll take make made up swear words, <laughs> med- medical terms, synonyms, but nothing that can be considered a traditional swear. So and every time every time we mess up, every time someone swears, and he's caught for it. We'll pour part of our drink into into a glass. The person who swore the most at the end of the part will drink a cocktail of all of our drinks. Yes. King's Cup. You mm-hmm. may call it King's Cup. I I call yeah. it. I'm that's gross. I'm not drinking that. Pretty and much. we'll play. We'll play. We'll play it in parts one and two. Just you know, so just a double what? fun. I call it a ducking stupid idea. Oh, well, uh, what's our um, yeah. what's our what's our poisons then? Well, what have you got. I am I am drinking. Uh, Jake Daniels and Cola. That that's some foul stuff. That that particular stuff because they used a real cheap brand. It's not great. Don't don't sip it now. Mm. It's punishment. I I asked for a gin and tonic and I was given a vodka lime and soda. So you get what you're given. Uh, yeah, that. that's true. Uh, well, I've got a uh, I've got a Pinot, just a fizzy Pinot. But these are all canned Pino, versions. Pinot Grigo Sparkly. <laughs> yes, they are all in a can. And someone I've at got the a end Pinot. Of a Pinot Grigio, right? <laughs> All right, yeah, I'm from London, <laughs> yeah. right? I get it. And someone at the end of part one will be drinking a combination of all three. Uh, so Fun times. Let's go. Should we start with the sequel pictures from last episode? Episode nine, Master yeah. Commander. Yeah, who won? Who, uh, who won? Well, it's a 50-50 split. It's between me and you, Dan. Yes. Uh, between Lovely. post-captain for me and Dan's Battle of Waterloo. So Ashley, on the spot right yep. now, can you pick a winner? With, but without giving your reasons for picking a winner. Okay. Only the reasons why the other person lost, please. Oh, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> Actually, no, yeah. You know what? I will. Because I, it's well known that I was scribbling during my one, so I wasn't... I pretended to listen to you two, but I wasn't really. Mm-hmm. Um, so the one I'm not going with is the one that got confused between the Battle of Waterloo and the Battle of Trafalgar. Ah. Uh-huh. So mm. in that case, I'll have to go for Lewis's. Sorry, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> there Thanks. you go. I'm the winner. <laughs> Thanks, even though I said it was just going to be the Battle of Waterloo. <laughs> yeah, but you said with ship battles. Ship battles is Trafalgar and happened before this film was set. Fine. Oh, Whatever. yeah. I bet he, I, like, it's not going to be I bet he wanted to do a swear anyway. then, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> I heard that. Uh, <laughs> right, so. Liberty bit. Change of format this week as well. We're not going to do the news. I've got the news. Tough. It's not what the show's about anymore. There's going to be a Witcher series on Netflix. That's it. That's olds. That's, yeah, that's well, already olds. And by the time this episode goes up, it's even olds. Ugh. So we're going to move straight on to addendums and housekeeping. Oh, housekeeping. Housekeeping. Calling. Yes. Uh, basically, uh, the old we you know podcast hosting costs money. We're, ru- we're running out of space. So the older episodes, starting with episode one. Uh, they're going to start disappearing off of yes, that's true. Automatic and iTunes and wherever else you can find them, and they'll start appearing on YouTube. So if you want to go back and listen to them, yeah, you can find them on YouTube. Download the audio. I don't care. Then we might, we might, we ain't worried. We might add new stuff. We might do it. You know, it might be a rougher cut, but it'll be slightly longer. And there'll definitely be some dank memes, young guys. <laughs> right? Did you Am really? Right? Did you really have to say that? Dank is a swear word. Dank is not a swear Coming word. Coming from you, it is. Uh, do you want me to pour some out? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because you're already drinking from it. We should, we should all be drinking from them. No. The podcast. Then what's the point of the... Oh, to mix them my... together. To mix them together. 
Someone pass. No, chicken. I love this. Oh, oh. Pour some out. <laughs> <laughs> and Dan can bleep that. The the aim of the episode is to make this a family friendly podcast. I know this is going to go well because my. Well, I can smell this. This smells horrible. And this, and this and almost my automatic response for was being called out was oh sugar. Ah, I see. How much? Well, that's uh, when. just just as much as you want. Just pour out as much as you oh, want. Oh, listen to that. Oh. <laughs> the aim is to make a family friendly podcast that about the Keith great Lemon the, movie. That doesn't taste great from the can. Uh, another bit of housekeeping. We're in double digits now, so I think it's time to retire the electric boogaloo clause. No. Yes. <laughs> no. Yes. Because I haven't used it yet, and I will use it today. Okay? okay, well, you can use it today, but from episode 11 onwards, I think we should change it to the... From the Electric Boogaloo yep. to Title Harder. Okay. Okay, yeah. Yes. Although that was we'll switch it up. One. All in favour, say aye. 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 There we go. And last month, just, just an addendum... I said that the Joker origin movie will be based on the Red Hood. I've since realised, you know, I got my red head where mixed up the Red Hood is a spoiler. I meant the red mask that Joker wears in the killing joke. And I think the majority of listeners knew what I meant. But there you are. Uh, you point is, I, I got it. it right. And that's what the movie are doing anyway. So obviously it's what the movie are doing. It's the only thing they can do. Yeah. With, with Yak and Whack and Phoenix. Yak and Whack I mean, and Phoenix is in talks. Well. It's not... <laughs> He's not confirmed yet. No, according one to some guy, people. One guy on Twitter. One some people, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. So, I mean, we can jump straight in to well, Tomb Raider. Tomb Raider. That's Tom, what we saw. That's Tom what we saw this month. We saw. We saw that last night. We saw Tomb Raider in 3D and we saw 4D. it in 4DX. 4DX. We got dicks. And 4Dx. guys, uh, what what are, you, what are your thoughts? Does, does this movie break the video game curse? And also, how awful is 4DX? Yeah, can can we do a quick mini review of, of 4DX? <laughs> we definitely well, we already can. Have with cool. I'm going right. to do it right now. That was a horrible experience. I hated every moment I was in that theater in 4DX. I'll tell you why. It was so I uncomfortable. Got... I had to go sit on the stairs because it was just more enjoyable. I took my the glasses off. I rubbed my eyes. I took five minutes because I wasn't missing anything important. Because you can't monkey fighting, pour ah, some drink yeah, yeah. out, and bleep it. You, you can't see anything really going on. It's, the movie's too dark. But I had to go sitting on, on the stairs, and it's like, okay, this is a much more enjoyable experience. I can focus <laughs> on the movie instead of being throwing about violently shaken. And let's, I hate 4DX. Let's never forget that Dan is the reason we went to see it in 4DX. I am. I am indeed the reason I saw it in 4DX. So... I mean, now you know. But tell you what. I just. I, you guys have poured out a lot of your drinks. Well, someone's well, yeah, a coward. We're, we're playing a game, mate. Get on our level. No, you're a coward. I am. Yeah. It's I'm terrible. Like, I've got the feeling that for the X is a future of cinema, but the issue they've got at the moment is there's no playbook for it. So they're just giving it to someone and going, watch the film, push buttons when you think stuff needs to happen. So they're just going overboard. And saying, right, camera's moving, let's shake you here. Or this is right. happening, let's do this. this. It's clearly like indoor VR roller coaster technology yeah, they've it's given you. It's just theme park in technology. It's theme park technology. And that's where it should remain. And you pay £20 for the privilege. Mm. I know, that's ridiculous. If you enjoy being cross-eyed and unable to focus on a movie, then 4DX is right yeah. up your if street. If you like being violently punched in the back yeah. and well, yeah, thrown that's... about like someone's just kicked you down the stairs. That's one thing that yeah. was new. I didn't. I don't remember being when I watched Jumanji was the mm. repeatedly being punched in the back. <laughs> and I would have filled that's something I would remember. But because this is an action... I mean, Jumanji was an action film, but because this is more action, they've just gone, right, every hit that a character takes, every... Slight fall, every stumble, or nudge. I, I'm I'm really surprised. And mild spoiler: when Lara gets injured, we all didn't just get stabbed. True, <laughs> like yeah. a, a shank yeah. goes into our stomachs. Also, to now, really immerse you. Now I have seen uh, two 40x films. When they say you're going to be bombarded with scents, it's one scent, and I don't know what it is, and it's really weird. I'm pretty sure that's just car polish. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what it was. It's, it doesn't it's, make sense. It was Fabrice, just, right? It's just it's stale. Stale Fabrice. Stale odor. That's what it is. Yeah. That, that whole experience actually gave my future wife a bad back. It hurt her back. Yeah. Well, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Like, it's, a bad, it's a faulty massage chair. <laughs> oh, that's my God, it, it really was. is. Yeah. Because it's, that's what it felt like. It's just those kind of rotating cup things, but just punching you in the lower back. 
Guys, don't don't go to 4DX. It's Just awful. Save your money. It's awful. No one was there. If, if it was a 12-minute thing at a theme park, might be fun. Yeah, yeah, but, might be all right. I had Fine. one enjoyable scene, and it's similar to Jumanji. I enjoyed the helicopter ride. Mm-hmm. In Lara Croft, I liked it in the storm on the ship. I hated that. But mm-hmm. the reason why I don't like it as much as Jumanji is because, number one, it was so dark. Even if I was sitting still, I wouldn't have been able to tell what was happening mm. on that ship. Yeah. And being jostled around the whole time just made it... I couldn't concentrate on the screen. Yeah. Do you um, know what made it worse, though? Is, is that the, sh- the ship crash took place during a thunderstorm as well. And the, so the they stro- have... I like the strobe light. lighting. That goddamn strobe light I like going the strobe off. light. It's too much. You can too light much. the strobe light, but it's it's in time with the with the lightning, lightning. in the movie. And there's a see lot of lightning. Light. Yeah. And Only when it goes it, off, it's right in your eyes. Yeah. And you can't see. And you already can't see the movie because it's so dark and you're cross-eyed because of your sunglasses (laughs) and you're being shaken around violently and then they're flashing lights in your eyes. There's your problem. You were wearing sunglasses and it's dark out. Actually, this might not be a bad war zone simulator. Like, if (laughs) if they just put you down and said, all right, you want to join the army, here's an idea of a worst-case scenario combat zone and they just put you in in a 4DX movie for an hour and a half and just let all that happen and go, can you put up with that? No? Okay. Go home. The opening scene, from, well, not the opening scene, but the second scene from Saving Private Ryan in 4DX. Yeah, just, yeah. 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 I think that would give people a, a better idea of what it, what it might be like. <laughs> should we talk about the movie proper? Yeah, let's talk the about movie the movie. in itself, shall we? Because, yeah. What do we think? Nothing happened. Uh, it was one of those very boring I, films. I have, yes. I have nothing to say about this movie. Like, no positives or negatives. I really have nothing. You have no negatives. I have nothing. Oh, I have negatives. Mm-hmm. Let me, I, I, I got nothing, man. I can I can watch a bad movie mm. and find something fun in there. I can abide a bad movie. What I can't abide is a bland movie, mm. and that's what this was. This is this is one of the blandest movies I yeah, have ever seen. It's boring, <laughs> and it's it's exposition heavy. And I've said I've said before that exposition is part of the language of film. It's it's not a dirty word, except here it is. Yeah, well, because every scene, it's hey, you know that your father died. <laughs> like, yeah, I did know that. Thank you, but why don't you remind me so the audience know? Yeah, mm. but I mean, it, it it was good though because we never would have seen Dominic West coming back. I mean, that was never going to happen. Why? Also, Why? spoilers. If you don't want to hear spoilers to this boring movie, you can fast forward to Flippity Flip, Dippy Dippy Boo. 3751. <laughs> uh, am, I, am I allowed to swear in hand gestures or does that count? <laughs> no, 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 no. No, no swearing. <laughs> no swearing. No swearing okay. in hand gestures or mouth gestures. You can't well, even I'm say just the words. Say fun to you. Fun? Yes. That's fine. Let's all have fun, That's everyone. Absolutely fine. You can make up swear words. I will allow that. Um, is bum a swear word? Mm, mm. It's borderline. Yeah, can we? Can we bum? Speaking of <laughs> Dominic West <laughs> yeah. as yeah. as Richard Ashcroft. Yeah. That's, for that is his name. Uh, why do we as an audience, and what, more, more importantly, why does Lara mm. give two sheeps about her dad? Uh, because because all, all, all we know about him from the flashbacks... Was that he was constantly leaving? Yeah, that's a good Maybe point. That's why she just had, and she just and had kept a bad half of his life issues. secret from her. Why so, does she care about him so much? Abandonment issues hasn't doesn't have a mum. The yeah, only... it's just daddy issues. Yeah. Hmm. I guess I never realised that about Lara. Just in general, she has daddy issues. They, 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 they they've taken the Lara Croft of the reboot. The strong, independent female character. In, Made her sole motivation a man, yeah. Given her daddy issues, yeah. There are there are maybe two other women with speaking parts in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not a great film. One of them's in it for like what, maybe ten minutes total, if that, if that, if that. Um, I, I, what kind of really bugs me is, I know they're, they're taking their own approach to it, but one of the nice things I've always liked about Lara Croft is you just always assumed her dad is dead. She never finds him, and it's never a point in her life. It's just. In all the games, always he's dead. Maybe I don't really know, but I'm gonna go just rob some tombs. And they change that in the film that he's just he's still alive on on the island. Of course he was. Of course he was. Yeah. If you want to introduce the dad, just have him teaching her. So this film could have been the prequel to Lara Croft. 
So this could have been how she learned how to Tomb Raid. Yeah, just could by have been. tagging along with him, not just have him as the MacGuffin. Yeah, I mean, I mean, really, I, I could have, I could have lived with that, or I could have lived with him being a hallucination after she got, you know, I don't know, really banged up in a gunfight or whatever, or you know, mm. got attacked by wolves or something like that, and right. just like. Superman uh, you know, situation. Why do we fall, Bruce? Uh, so we can get back up. Mm. You know, something like that. That would have been... It would have been acceptable. Something. See, that would have been some semblance yeah, of that's, character. That's what you guys <laughs> are falling something. back on. This is your... Oh, that would have been better than this. <laughs> and, and that's telling. So what, what does that really say? Yeah. You know? Why is Lara Croft... Hmm. Because that's her surname. Thank you. Moving on. Why is Lara Croft both a an amazing fighter and super smart and savvy woman and also the most gullible human being in the world? She's not an amazing fighter. She loses everything we see until she wins. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good uh, point. <laughs> what a character arc. <laughs> Actually, can I, can I ask something? Like, why was it that the 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 chokehold or the rear naked hold, whatever you want to call it, yep. that was a like, seminal plot point in that it movie. Was. Yeah, there are three of points. Her, she, she, like, she, in, the, in her little opening where you're in, being introduced and she gets choked out mm-hmm. and she loses and taps. And then three other times it happens or four other times it happens in the movie and she gets out of the rest of them. It's like, that's a really important hold in this mm. film. Like, that choke hold has yeah. more prominence in this movie than some characters. The, the choke hold in this movie has more prominence <laughs> than than Lara Derek Croft's Jacobi. signature signature weapons. <laughs> I know. She gets she gets a bow and arrow for a little bit halfway into the movie. Yeah. The entire third act builds up towards her using the hook. The, the climbing movie. hook. Yep. And she gets she gets her guns in a post credit scene. Yeah. Doesn't use them. Yeah. Well, it, I mean, it's it's reboot Lara, so I wasn't really worried about her having her her twin pistols because that's that's the older Lara stuff. And she, the newer I mean, Lara's she is... gets the she gets her twin pistols at the end of the reboot game. Which which one? For the 2013 reboot. She ah. gets her twin pistols at the end, and that's how she defeats the big bad with like boom, boom, bang, 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 bang. See, I don't remember that. I just remember always pumping the the uh, the bow and arrow because that's like MVP in that game. But anyway, I think that I think you have to use the twin pistols at, in the final scene though. Ah. The game. I don't remember. It's been a while, but I, I was fine. Like I was fine with them not being there. But I don't know. It just seemed, yeah. Every, I think uh, that that is that is how to describe the movie, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it, it trundles along. You get a, a long opening sequence of her running around London, mm-hmm. you know, and not actually swearing, which is not like a Londoner. <laughs> not like a Londoner at all. Although getting in the way of people on a bike, that's very London. That's very London. Oh yeah. my god, that's that very London. Fox hunt scene. Yeah. <laughs> Someone describe wow. the fox hunt scene. Okay, so there's a scene where they're... Um, <laughs> it's not actual... I don't know if anyone outside of England would know what fox hunting is, but basically yeah. a bunch of posh people get on horses with guns and dogs and hunt a fox for no other reason than they've got a lot of money. In this movie, though, the idea Politics. of fox hunt is... <laughs> the idea of the fox hunt is... Okay, well, you get on a bike, have a little fox tail attached to the back, Hang a paint can off you. We're going to jam a hole in it and the paint's going to drip out and then we're going to chase you. And if you can outrun everyone, you get money. And you're going to ride as recklessly as you can through the busy streets of London. Yeah. And she cheats. She cheats. And but here's she cheats. the thing. And there's like 30 or 40 bikers after her. Busy streets of London. She crashes into a police car. She causes public damage. Mm-hmm. I'm going to come to the police in a moment, but why didn't she cheat harder? Why did she not just stay on that? Hmm. Why didn't like, why'd she get off? Why well, ever get off? Yeah. Just stay there. Why not just cover up the hole in the paint can? And then <laughs> stuff the tail in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Done. No, even better. Ditch the paint can. Just hop on that car. Not literally pull up to that car, hook but, it on there and drive off. And then when she comes to claim her money, where's your paint can? <laughs> well, I never said anything she had to bring it back. I mean, for a bike career with no money who has to do this fox hunt in order to get Six hundred pounds. She's still affording a nice place in London. She's got a great view, isn't she? She's got a, like she's got like at least a two grand a month place at in London. Least. For that. Christ. But um the property damage, she hits a cop car. Why did she get arrested? They hit her. Mm, she broke the windshield. And yeah, also But the they fox stopped hunt. recklessly. Did they hit her? I mean she she went into the side of him, but they stopped recklessly. I'm pretty sure. I mean I'm She didn't trying... give way. 
Ah, uh, okay, yeah, bang her yeah. up. Also, she's defacing public property in the pavements. So yes. They yeah, okay, were apprehending a criminal yeah, okay. all over civic menace. But, like, she may not have known that. And may just be, you know... She should be smarter. She didn't know. Well, there she didn't are... go to Oxford or Cambridge, so, yeah, she's probably... Biscuits. Pour some drink out. <laughs> Pour some drink into your cup. Mate, <laughs> I didn't realise I had to bleep these. So this is going to make my job harder. But That's all right. Whenever you see a spike in the levels when we all go, you'll know it'll bleep around there. I'll put, I'll put a little hand of do-do-do-do yeah. on, on it. Uh, there are not enough butlers locked in fridges for my taste. Yeah, there's not enough uh, rimmer. Reference. Reference. Thank you. Uh, why? Spice. Go on. Spies sure love leaving all their stuff in one place. They sure do. Hey, they do. look at all the passports you have, Mr. <laughs> Bourne. <laughs> We've not really talked about the action scenes in this movie. What action scenes? <laughs> I mean... No, they were, but I couldn't see them because I kept being pushed yeah, out of my seat. Well, <laughs> yeah, the, that bike scene, actually, that was particularly violent when uh, yes. one guy crashes. I was like, oh my God, it's going to dislocate my shoulder. <laughs> like it was hard to focus on this movie with the 4DX being so obnoxious. Yeah, you know. So uh, there, I mean, there is a there is a boxing match. There is the bike chase. There's the foot chase through the Chinese docks. There's the boat crash. There's a yeah. gunfight. There's Lara going down the rapids in the yeah. airplane. That rapids takes up so much time. I have S- hated that scene. <laughs> yeah, and that that was the main point that I found where. They just employed useless tension for no reason. Yeah. You're not going to kill off your titular character third of the way through oh, the film. But, I mean, I kind of, you kind of wish they would, though, don't you? To just, a point. Because she, she was just stupid. misses the X button and gets, like, the branch through the throat or, you know, <laughs> the, the plane through the gut. Or the wolf savage. Yeah. yeah. But she, she's on a rust bucket. She's already removed one of its anchors, the wings, mm. has gone. That plane's going down. She chills about inside it. Yeah, she does. Oh, yeah. Well, we'll get to that in a moment. Yeah, please do. But what else? Is there? So there's, there's, there's that. There's, there's that. Uh, she, then she kills a man, and then there's another gunfight, and there's the bow and arrow fight, and there's the bit inside the temple, and it's there's all, all the traps. There's a lot of action scenes, but they're all so boring, and the bits between them are so ploddy oh, and heavy-handed, and it's. I mean, you're yeah, never like, actually paying attention to them. Just a you know, it's just a slog to get through. Well, one of the traps is the floor's falling away. We see them all get comfortably to the side, which doesn't fall away. Yeah. And then five minutes. So they've already saved from the peril, and now they've just got to chuck. Fudgical. Chuck. Biscuits. Uh, no. Oh, pour two things out, actually. Two, out. <laughs> two more Well, bleeps. we know who's drinking, uh, don't we? Ah. Uh, I yeah, the floor falls away like it's like in Indiana Jones, like Jehovah is spelt with an I, and and they they come back safely through, but the, there's no floor. Nope, they all get through fine. Yeah, when they come back, there's there's no floor there. How have they got back through? I, that's a good question. I like the mechanism. Movie don't care. I like the mechanism of the floor, though. They put some thought into that. Did you see how they actually do the floor? Uh, I wasn't really... No, because it was too dark. Too dark, and I was getting punched in the face by a chair. So So the the sides of these tiles had holes in them where spikes would have gone through, Mm. So as in metal poles. Mm. So as the trap was triggered, these poles would fade away. So from the inside out, the tiles would become disconnected. Oh, that's that's pretty... That that's a lot of thought for a detail no one's going to see in a movie that was mediocre. Yeah, the only the only sh- way they had a show in that was just a, a second of here's a hole in a tile as it falls down. Yeah, oh, no, that was a that's a clever detail. Mm. Talking of architecture, why didn't they blow through that darn door? Thank you. Uh, yes, thank you. Ah, <laughs> oh, we need we need Richard. We need a Croft to figure out the Japanese puzzle that was built. Like a thousand and a half years ago, when yeah. they didn't have C four, and C four would definitely take care of that and it's crumbly a foot, door. It's probably less than a foot thick. Yeah, well, even better. Why not just go next to the door and blow a hole through the <laughs> side? Yeah, or that. I mean, it, it's the same. That's effect. rude, Dan. That's rude. <laughs> I mean, just make a door like like you have the but explosives. They've made one for you. You've been detonating a lot of rock. I mean, yes, was that's it, all we see. It's just, just them blowing up rock. I don't know if this is going to be a swear word or not. Is it just for shiggles? I don't know. Shiggles is fine. Yeah. I'll allow, I'll allow it. Yeah. Shiggles is it fine. It gives me the shiggle giggles. <laughs> Why does the media hate 
the supernatural now. <laughs> mm. Can someone... I think because it's, it's an excuse for bad CGI. <laughs> I don't think it's hate but the they supernatural. They had the bad CGI anyway. They had their cake and ate it. Mm. Like I mean, th- it doesn't hate the supernatural. I mean, we we had the highest gross in the horror movie was it. You know, but when you when you look at horror movie, when you look at the new Tomb Raider, mm. yeah, Uncharted from three onwards lost like the supernatural plots. I wouldn't. Say, when, oh, no, not necessarily. Is, it did though. Yeah, but all further reincarnations of these are quote unquote gritty reboots, and gritty doesn't have. It's they try and make it dark, realistic. So, which doesn't have supernatural stuff. But by doing these gritty reboots where the supernatural thing isn't actually supernatural, it's just Scooby Doo. But this, this it's just this oh, did have is actually Mr. Jones the caretaker. <laughs> <laughs> See now, you have a problem with that, I, uh, but I I don't. This did it have doesn't... supernatural elements though. There was zombies in it. Yeah, no. so the movie wants to have its cake and eat it too. So it it says, oh, it's not supernatural, but here's a disease that turns you into a into a rage virus. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. But that's not supernatural. That's just he's just angry because he like he's angry because he's in tomb. Because his brain is being eaten away. Twenty eight days later, is supernatural. We're not talking about twenty eight days later. We're talking about it's in a, tomb rage, his, his, yeah, a rage he's virus. Zombie. Away. You can see holes in his going in him. Yeah. And what exactly do you have a problem with? Is it the fact that Tomb Raider is doing want... it or that that is there? You're, you're like, my problem T-Rex. is is that I Tomb Raider, I have a deep affinity for Tomb Raider. It's the first game I played on PlayStation. Mm. Last game I played on Xbox 360. I love the games dearly. Why? What? What is like the, the 2013 reboot mm. has the supernatural Japanese samurais at it the does. end. All the games before that, you know, you're fighting T Rexes, you're turning into gold, you're doing whatnot, you fight a dragon with a cannon. Yeah, the, super, the supernatural is always in Lara Croft. It is part yeah. of Tomb Raider's blood. Yeah. Why? Why shun it? Because this isn't. This is a. This is a movie. This is a movie. They get like. It's weird. Like this movie took some points from Tomb Raider and some points it, it that it didn't take. Like it was weird. It was like it sort of half borrowed essentially the first of the reboot games. Yes. And then didn't borrow and then didn't use the other half. No. And but I mean if it's a movie, it's always gonna do its own thing. And they decided for these movies to go with uh there's some basis in all all myths have some basis in, in reality. Fine, it, it didn't bug me. It, it was more of an it was an interesting thing that happened in a movie that was kind of boring. I prefer the Angelina Jolie Croft movies as a closer representation of Tomb Raider. I will give you that. They're not yeah. better movies because no. again, they, to they that, are more fun movies. To answer that question you asked up top about, is this you know a good video game movie? No, no, no they They're, never are. No. They never will be. It doesn't matter what it is or who it is. No, no, uh, do I... Uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson has come out and said Rampage will be the best ever video game movie. Did he say he, that about Doom as well? No, he learned his lesson from Doom, apparently. Did he? Because he's doing Rampage. A direct quote, <laughs> yeah. I mean, <sighs> again, it like I have nothing against the man or anyone who enjoys video game movies, but they're never good. No. Like the Uncharted one, when that inevitably happens, that won't be good. No. But how is it that a fake video game like Wreck-It Ralph can be a good movie? Because it's a movie first and a game second. It's, there's no source material it's trying to pull from. It's just referencing via pop culture games. But they could have done the same thing with Tapper. Yeah, they could have done. No, actually, no, they couldn't have done. Because, I mean, they would have had to reference characters in Tapper. I know Tapper is very basic, hmm. but they would have had to reference characters and it's things, just one and the Atari would have got referenced as well. Like, they would have, like, it's weak source material, but they would have pulled as much as they could from it. Whereas Wreck-It Ralph, that's an original character. They don't have to pull from source material. They can build a story around a new original character with no issues and no ties to a video game. And then all they've got to do is cherry pick things in video games very lightly. As a like cameo. A yeah, yeah. As a cameo. And then anything else that's other video game is just literally stuff you know. So Sugar Rush, Mario Kart, Heroes Duty, Call of Duty. Like, do you, that's all you got to do. Candy Crush. No. Oh, <laughs> oh, one day. No, <laughs> I, w- I wanted to, but no. <laughs> the point is, the Angelina Jolie one was better because it didn't shy away from the supernatural and had its own plot that wasn't, you know, ripped from a video game. Wasn't good. Wasn't good, but was definitely more fun. I both of them. Too recently, rewatched them. Still not great. 
Although well, the first one, the first one had I basement never, jacks, so never thought, never thought they were great, but they're definitely more fun. Yeah, okay, I yeah. give you that. With the bun, um, with the bungee action scene where she's bungeeing around her house and the men are bungeeing oh, no. in. Yeah, <laughs> actually, <laughs> I, yeah, that's kind of a fun scene, and she knocks someone out with a weird drill gun she puts a screwdriver in backwards and i'm not sure that's how those drill guns work yeah mate if you want to if you want to watch a tomb raider movie go and watch the angelina jolie one um i wanted to get to that plane scene actually go on and this after this was really we said this earlier a real problem with this movie of just continuously adding tension that doesn't need to be added there so she escapes the camp she's getting shot at you're getting punched in the back you're getting bits of air whiffed past your ears and the 4dx and she escapes, she go down, goes uh, through the, the rapids, hits an old plane that's sitting there, grabs the wing, you know, takes her time to pull herself up. Wing starts cracking. Okay, she, she gets a moment of rest and the wing starts to crack. She runs along, jumps onto the plane, in the plane. Okay, she's safe. Oh, no, the plane starts turning. The plane turns over, smashes down. It's yep. still stable. She's safe. Oh, the window's cracking. Now what I'm going to do? Oh, I grab that parachute. Okay, I'm safe. Pull the parachute. Oh, the parachute's got a hole in it. Flying through the trees, get stabbed in the stomach, land on the ground. Then it's then, then finally, we get a moment to stop before she's then attacked by a dude. Yeah. And that but, dude, her her first kill, I thought was the best scene of that film. Yes, although it because she feels racked with guilt for twenty seconds and before then, going and on a bow murder. Yeah, break. then she becomes Finn in Force Awakens. Oh, yeah. I'm killing my buddies. Uh, but, her bow and arrow is an insta kill. No, well, yes, but with a bow and arrow, mm. do, does does do, do, does the arm not need to flex when you draw the bow? Otherwise, you've just got a loose string. Uh, so, what would you mean? So, so, when she draws her bow, yeah, the arms of the bow, yeah, would they would they not bend? Slightly. Yes, yes, they, they would, would wouldn't they? So yeah. Yeah, yeah, obviously Her bow that... did not. No, it no. did not. It, 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 was, it, she, it was just a loose string. And then. yet somehow it always insta-killed, insta-kill. which arrows don't do. And no, she then did that's... a standoff, a Mexican standoff against a gun. Bows and arrows are not guns. <laughs> right. You, like, um, sorry. This is a quote for a t-shirt. Bows and arrows are not guns. They're not. Guns don't kill people, and neither Rappers do bows do. and arrows. Uh, <laughs> Cars are not dogs. Like, what else are things not? Cars are not people, Pixar. <laughs> Do you hear me? Anyway. Right, you pull a, a bowstring back for long enough and your arm is going to start shaking. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have a standoff with a villain who has an automatic weapon. You're dead. You're, you have shaky arm and dead face. Yeah. She seems to miss the the, uh, the integral point of a bow is that you be silent with a bow. And you fire from a distance, so no one hears you. Well, no, because we've already seen that she can't pull it enough to bend the bow, so she has to be a meter in front of them. The uh, the sneaky through where she was sort of half half drawing it was really weird when she was sneaky through the camp with the bow. Yeah, mm-hmm. that, it, it looked really weird. And like at, like any time you see you know bow killing stuff in games or movies, it's very much it's always just not not no. drawn back. I mean, Alicia Vikander and and Walton Goggins, they they both deserve better than this movie. I think most people here deserve better than this do movie, they? really. Do they? I mean, really? Most people? I mean, Richard Croft, he was... I Actually, he's a really good actor. Uh, I was, was, I was thinking this. Movie. I like him, but I can't think about a film where I can say, yeah, you, that's the film I know him from as a good actor. No. Uh, I, well, more from his short dramas on like TV. See, I know he's all right in The Wire, and... but I won't watch The Wire. You won't? Ah. Oh. Because I tried watching episode one and it was like, here's a pager, go type out your report on the one computer in the office and I can't get behind that. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, let's not get into that now. But <laughs> I also watched episode one of The Wire and didn't understand what they were saying. <laughs> <laughs> That's a I will give it another shot one day. Well, this isn't about The Wire, this podcast, guys. Okay? Welcome to The Wirecast, <laughs> where two people haven't seen it. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, brilliant idea. Corner in that market. Done. Those kids in China yeah. who stole her backpack. Why are three kids running a distraction scam and then they all run away in the same direction? They, I don't know, but they all really wanted that bag because one of them pulled a knife. That's right. One yeah. of them. Yeah, one of them. Not all of them. Nope. One of them. The, the leader. Yeah. That's how you know he's the leader. The leader. The leader take, pulled a knife because he down. really, really thought this was worth his time. Yep. 
Could have just been a bag full of fish. They're at a dock. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably could have just been full of like Instagram filters. I don't know. That, that's <laughs> yeah, how it yeah, works, that's right? that's right. You keep them in a bag. You, yeah. you carry them in a bag? Yep. Right. Yes. Correct. With these Snapchats. Okay. Anybody else got any other points they want to bring up before oh, we move on to final thoughts? My, my final note is the uh, gun scene at the end. Mm-hmm. Um, since 2000... No, sorry. Since 1997... Uh, the sale of handguns is illegal in the UK. Yes. So that would not happen. That's, no, that's a pawn shop. I assume they were doing it illegally. It was. You could see it from the front desk. Yes, obviously it's a bad movie. <laughs> well, no, they had more than just handguns there. There were machine guns. There were submachine yeah, yeah, guns in those racks as yeah. well. Yeah. Like, like how like how much did they get through customs to get those custom parts for the guns? Because remember that lady had two custom pistols. Mm-hmm. That were exactly the same. Yeah. To get all that through customs into England, because I'm pretty sure, unless you're doing some, you know, real back alley yeah, stuff. Yeah, I mean, they they were they were crime in all criminals. They were crime in all. They were yeah. criminals, man. They were crime in Dan, final thoughts on the movie. Um, uh, the very last scene in the in the tomb, I actually kind of liked the whole going through the tomb, mm-hmm. finding Himiko with the handmaidens and all that stuff, and. That felt it was very Indiana Jones, but it felt closer to what Tomb Raider is, which is raiding tombs. And I just like I like the fact that you know they pop the thing and yeah, she's just and she's infected. Yep. And that's that's all it is. She's just some really weird virus. And you know, I didn't mind that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it sounds, on, like, it sounds like you're really yeah. So she like you're really you're sold get, on the movie. You know, this movie yeah. Yeah, uh, and I thought the whole him standing over her ready to kill her with the pickaxe was weird. Yeah, because the bomb didn't like the he guy exploded the place, but he doesn't get shaken up. He, he was just... a terrible villain, Bogon. Yes, he was. <laughs> right, when it when he started reading poetry to her, I just didn't get it. Joke. Mm. Uh... <laughs> no, we got it. Thank you. Okay, yeah, that that's all I have left okay. to really say. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, like you say, it's it's don't. It's very Indiana Jonesy. <laughs> Yeah, she she raids a lost ark in a temple of doom. Mm-hmm. Mm. It's her dad's last crusade. I'd rather watch Crystal Skull, mate. Yeah, uh, oh, I'd how, rather watch Crystal Skull. How again. long did it take you to write that? To come up with that, we that, chose poorly. That that took me at least forty eight hours before I'd seen the movie. <laughs> I was writing that line. <laughs> no, but I mean, really, it's, it's, it's yeah that yeah yeah that's as you said, Dan. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's all the enthusiasm well reasoned, I can muster. Well reasoned debate. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Don't, go, don't go see it. Watch something else. Video game movies are terrible. Yes. Forever. Watch so, them. that's the end of part one. He's in the part one. Fairy Godmother. Did, who did the most warring? <laughs> now you've got to add more to your drink. <laughs> Shall we combine? Yeah, let's, 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 uh, let's compare. Combine drinks. Ho! Ta da! There you go. Let's all pour uh, into yeah. Ash's cup. Come here, Ash. Mm, so, there goes tell the, the audience Jake what, what I have. So Jesus, that's more than I expected. Yours is you've got vodka, Pinot Grigo, and Jake Donald's with Coca Cola. Ashley's gonna drink that during the break while you guys listen to our hashtag pod wife of the month. It's popcorn prattle. We'll see you in a bit. You know, I mean, usually whenever people start talking about doing a I mean, look, here's the point that I'm trying to make here, okay? Barb is This is what I don't understand. I mean, how I mean, could I don't they have how you made think a movie this bad? I mean, I know who greenlit like, this? Who said that, that, that this was okay? Look at the adaptation that came out here. Yes, there have been many, but I'm Come get belligerent on Popcorn Prattle Film Talk Podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, and Podbean. You'll be glad you did. We're back. We are uh, back. Hello, everybody. How was your hello. drink, Ashley? Um, I, I'll admit I've only got about halfway. Uh, I think you got more than halfway. I think way you more than halfway. At least three quarters, I think. You're nearly there. Do you want me to finish that? Uh, I'm safe with this. Okay. I'm safe with this. So, um. We've got a sponsor. Mm-hmm. Uh, it would have been 4DX. Um, no, I burned that sponsor to the ground. Yeah, we I had word during the break, and they pulled pulled out. 
So now our sponsor is Blankets. Yay. I took a blanket into the pictures last night, like an old man. And they've got a theme tune as well with instructions. Instructions say I start off with a, with a, with a bass line, with a rim line. And then when I point to you, you can join in with a synonym for, you, for blankets. Okay? We ready? <clears throat> yeah. And then afterwards, Dan, you can lay on like a, a fat bass line. <laughs> That's kid speak for do some music. Okay, ready? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Blanket, 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 Cover. Blanket. Cover. Blank. Blank. Throw. Blank. Blank. Throw. Blank. Blank. Throw. Blank. Cover. And then finish on duvet. Right. And three. One. Two. Three. Duvet. duvet. Blankets, duvet's everybody. Duvet's not a blanket. Blanket. Duvet's not a blanket. That's yeah. our sponsor. Uh, moving on. Keith Lemon, the movie. We've reloaded our drinks. We've reloaded our drinks. We I have, have a Pims that's very stale. Very stale. I have gin and pink grapefruit. I have my gin and tonic now, but I've still got to get through the guff of whatever that is. Mm. Uh, once again, any swearing, pour it out. Loser will drink the combination at the end. Yeah. So, Dan, how, gonna... how do you feel about Beauty and the Beast? Mm, I hate it. But <laughs> just up top, Lewis. Bozo. Q. Monkey fighting. Wow. Q. Oh, my Q. God. Q. That's a drink. Q. Q. Oh. That's at least I hate. <laughs> <laughs> you hurt my little kitty ear holes. That's disgusting. What have you got? I do it the because I love you. Gin and pink grapefruit. Oh well, yeah, of course. <laughs> oh, God, pink grapefruit in a cat. Minute Maid actually is quite good. I do it because I love you. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> Thank, I might, Thank you, Daniel. I might swear just so one one of you gets to taste this. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm good, thanks. So, our second false start <clears throat> of this evening, because Tomb Raider is obviously not getting a sequel. It's bad. Oh God, no. Uh, is Keith Lemon the film? <laughs> My first night before I'd even put the DVD in was, remember, don't swear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> right. I, I, I haven't written anything, but I kind, of, I kind of feel we've got listeners in other countries. They're not going to know Keith Lemon and, and Lee Francis, his oeuvre. Lucky them. Mm-hmm. His back catalogue, as it were. Yeah. Should we, should we give like a quick rundown of Keith Lemon and Lee Francis's work? Just, just yeah. To... You, you know character actors, right? And how they're quite good. Not this one. Right, so in 2002... Yeah, give us the rundown. As best I can. 2002, uh, Lee Francis, a ex-graphic designer turned quote-unquote comedian, <laughs> scores a TV show on Channel 4 with the help of Davina McCall, I think. Really? Yes. Wow. Uh, called Bo Selector. That's on her conscience forever. I think there's a bit more than that. On her conscience. <laughs> anyway, Bo Selector was a, a, a sketch show lampooning celebrities, uh, and the the pull of it was that they they all masks. had like they all had terrible masks, big chins, mm. and they were really bad impressions. It was like uh, go out and Google um, spitting image. It was like terrifying versions of those. Yes. Or with northern accents. Or if you're gonna yeah. go on Google, just Google Bo Selector and then we you know we won't have to do this. Yeah. Um anyway, Bo Selector lasts for five series, I think. And then he goes to the US. He does two in the US, I think. Something like that. And I then think. Well, that's actually quite a funny comedian who degraded herself for that show. Anyway. Yeah, when well anyway, when Bo Selector finishes, uh Lee Francis Move, creates a new character called Keith Lemon, who is a fake tan, bleach blonde, small businessman who, for whatever reason, has a game show on ITV. He now also has a primetime ITV One show and through the keyhole, a yeah. sketch show with Paddy McGuinness. Um, you may or may not know from Phoenix Nights if you're a fan of decent comedy. Um. I mean, that's just, that's just the quick rundown of who he is. He's an ex-graphic designer, bad comedian, makes fun oh, no. of celebrity culture for a living, doesn't do jokes, just references. 
Oh, he also had that bear thing as well. Oh, yeah, and he when did a bear, a bear thing. Is that can we, is, I, anything? I anyone, good. anyone want to add anything? Right. Oh, this is a bad drink. <laughs> swear, get some, get some in Whoa. me. Is it? Mm. A, a, I don't want to swear. I've done so well. Is it a bloody bad drink? It's. Uh... Oh, I was sound like Richard A. What you? <laughs> it's bloody bad. <laughs> <laughs> it is frankankurus. Oh, wash your mouth out with soup. It, it is awful. I like sitting there watching it going Fufan. It's it's just <laughs> awful. Right. Fufan. So let's let's start. Go on. Ash, before, he's got his hand up. Before I even got to press play, before I even watched the film, I watched the trailers because I wanted to long oh, it out you? as much as possible. Oh, yes, of yeah, course. You, because you, you I bought you guys the DVD. You brought us the DVDs, yeah. so you, you you mother liquor. These were unskippable trailers. You mother liquor. Were they unskippable? Yeah. Oh I watched I'm sorry. Them. I'm going to tell you what they are. We had Expendables 2. We had Magic Mike. We had The Last Stand. We had Friends with Kids. We had What to Expect When You're Expecting. And we had Texas Chainsaw 3D. We had Classics. six trailers that had nothing classics. to do with what this style of movie was. Or oh, Expendables 2 is is referenced in Keith Lemon movie, no, isn't it? No, it not. is. Expendables 1. Well, Expendables 1 is, uh, yeah. Who cares? Yeah. All of those, <laughs> all of those. So you you have both seen the extended and unrated version <laughs> of this movie because yeah. I bought you the DVDs. <laughs> Which I, isn't any longer. I don't own the DVD. It doesn't sit on my shelf at home. I watched the theatrical version, so we might have a few differences. You may have, you know, some things that I don't. The bit where he goes to the moon. Yeah, the bit where he goes to the moon. <laughs> I, I have no coherent notes, more just... I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. Yeah, it's just, I want to hit you. I hate yeah. this. That that that's about as coherent as my notes it's get. Just, really. Here's an observation. That's silly. Well, let's try and be as objective as we can. Okay. Give it a fair well, shot. At first, the first thing I've got here is I don't want this film. That's as objective as I can get. The with very this. first thing we see in the movie is Keith Lemon ejaculating over us. Yeah, which well. sets the tone right off the bat. <laughs> That, that is I mean, the first yeah. frame. Set up right. Just remember, guys, the bar is below the floor. It's in, It's buried six feet under. See, I, I obviously set my bar quite high because one of my notes here just says anal joke. And if I knew how many were to come, I wouldn't have written that. <laughs> <laughs> anal joke? Really? I mean, it's got to be during that first scene. It's got to be during the first. I can't think of... Something about a back door, probably. Uh, probably. Yeah, probably something like that. Humor! Um, so, yeah, he. it starts off with a dream and him... Coming over the screen and Kelly Brook. Kelly Brook. Not being able to act. Are you guys both going to pretend you don't know who Kelly Brook is? No, I just remember what her last name was. I was going to call her Kelly Clarkson, but it's not Kelly Clarkson. Yeah, I was going to call her Kelly Clarkson, but it's not her. (laughs) It's Kelly Brook. Uh, Yeah. And then he has that dream and then there was a bow selector mask. I thought, oh God. Three minutes in. Three. No, no. Three minutes in, he's already dipping back no. into the Bo Selector material. <laughs> Mate, he's it's, run out it's less of than original three minutes. content. It's less than three minutes, and I can tell you why. Go on. Because I have time to fart joke, right? Yeah. The time it took for him to get to a fart joke, two minutes, 45 seconds right. from start. Okay, so it's less than three minutes in. I think it's actually at the two-minute mark. We get, a, we get a Bo Selector. I was like, oh, please, no, don't do this it's, to me. I can't. It's so fast. It's I Craig can't David handle it. One. It's, it's a Craig yeah, David. It's the Craig one. David yeah. boss. Can I tell you, Craig David hates Lee Francis. Yeah, I don't blame him. And Bo Selector. Don't you know, blame him. I read an interview, a rare out of character interview with Lee Francis, and the topic of Craig David comes up. And there's a wonderful quote. I'd like to read it for you now. Mm hmm. So this is Lee Francis talking here. He says, "Yeah, he's been saying that if I was a proper comedian like Ricky Gervais, I'd move on from you know, taking the mick. Mm. Uh, thing is, I'm not a proper comedian. Mm-hmm. I'm just lucky that my job is messing around. And I think that's wonderful that he just admits I'm not a comedian. I'm not mm. a proper comedian. I'm not a comedian. What a moron. Yeah, he's not funny. He's not funny. He's... No, it's not funny. He's just a personality. He's not even that. He's just annoying. He's not a personality. <laughs> because the personality that you he's see just is a, a um, fictional character. Yeah, but so are most endlists. 
He's just a. No, but, a, no, but he's just Keith a, Lemon is an actual fictional fictional character. The, that Keith Lemon doesn't exist. Doesn't have a passport. Lee Francis has the passport. Mm. He he is a bumblehole. All right, he he is a bumblehole. He is bumblehole. Nodding vigorously. I I dislike this man on so on like on many levels because of what because of his output. I've never seen. I've never like actually seen any interviews with him out of character or in character, or whatever than that like that. Mm. But anytime I see any of his content. By selector, that bear nonsense, uh, celebrity juiced. Yeah, I think it was called. Like, I just think to myself, I want you to stop being famous and fade back into obscurity. Yeah, that's a point we should add. Lee Francis makes these characters, he makes these Bo selector characters. Uh, the figurehead of which was Avid Merrion, a, mm. a stalker, a stalker with a neck brace, and Keith yeah. Lemon is like he's from Leeds, and small businessman, shell like uh, terrible suits and whatnot. Uh, and for the most part, when he's out in public, lives in character. So yeah. If, if he's out in the public eye, it'll be it won't be Lee Francis doing an inter- interview. It'll be Keith Lemon mm. doing an interview. A yeah. Very can't, a very Sasha Baron Cohen. Yes, except Sasha Baron Cohen can turn it off. Yeah, it's yeah. difficult to mention the two in the same sentence because they're both like the character actors. But one's then, funny. Yeah. They're, one's they're funny. Not in the same league. One's made point. And one, I want to beat to death with a shovel. Mm. So, I've never wished violence on anyone here before. Oh, are you this sure? man, this <laughs> You've man threatened to hit both of us on regular yeah, occasions. You two, yeah. you two, fine. <laughs> I, you know, celebrities and actors and whatnot. No, at five minutes mm. during the uh, sort of credit sequence where he's late for work and having a oh, shave, and mm. I write, ha ha ha! Look, he's getting messy. And he got his bum out. Mm. If it wasn't for the content, I think that young kids might like this. Mm, no. Because he gets his bum out and gets messy. What was the rating? Is it it's 18, isn't it? 18. Whoa. He I gets can... his bum out. Of course it's an 18. But there's stuff that got removed from it because they wanted to lower the rating. Yeah. I'd so love it, to know it what they It may have just been un- unrateable. Yeah, Maybe. Maybe. Um, so I've got down here as well when we're, when we're in that, that opening montage apart from I want to kill him mm. I've also got God bless the PS4 for having 1.5 speed because that's how I watched this movie oh, mate, <laughs> I put it on 1.5 and what, like, I was like comedy is all like? about timing there was no comedy <laughs> comedy is about timing and at 1.5 you have messed up the timing shut up there's no comedy in this what, film. What, what did Vern Troyer sound like in 1.5? Like he was sped up to 1.5. Christmas, Christmas time like is everyone. here. Like, uh, like, I was refusing to pay attention to this movie as much as possible. I hated it. When Kevin Bishop... Oh, yeah, I've got also... ...is funnier than you, you've royally messed up, right? Not yeah. in this film. Yeah. Not He's in fu- this film. He is funnier than Keith Lemon in he this is. movie. He is funnier than But Keith not in Lemon. this film. Oh, I also put down in the opening montage a cavalcade of nobodies hits the opening credits. Oh. Uh, people like no oh, one yeah. cares yeah, about. Yeah. Oh mate, like like people who go like, can I give you a fiver just to turn up for a couple minutes? No, yeah. They all did it for free. Oh, that's even worse. Oh, it is. It is. If I'm in town for for this moment, then yeah, I'll do it. Terrible. Because you know who didn't want to be in it? Yeah. Mel C. No, Mel C was in it. Mel B. Yes. Then. Maybe, yeah. yeah. Well, that's why there was more Bo Selector stuff. Yeah. To which I say, I'm offended by the Bo Selector stuff. I'm seven, offended that is. That was there. seven minutes, 34 seconds in. In the cab, we go, we've go. we gone through Baby and Sporty Spice. Mm-hmm. And obviously, if you know Lee Francis's work, and you know the level we're working at, you know where it's going. Mm-hmm. And at 8.06, we get another Bo Selector appearance. We get Scary Spice, who... Um, Talk like this because that's funny. Mm. This is oh, my yo. kitchen where I do a bit of cooking and a bit of Battenberg. You can put some drink down. Ah! <laughs> I'm also going to put some drink down I'm because cooking. she goes, oh yeah, Mr. Falcon. <laughs> and that is comedy. Go on then, tell me I'm your favourite Spouse Girl. <laughs> Yeah, I mean that's that's the level working at. That is, that is the level we're. And she talks that about she talks about her smelly genitalia. She does. That's a that's standard point. That, which was, it, I mean, it was her catchphrase mm-hmm. for you know five years. And both selector. Obviously, we, you know, we're not talking about the real 
Scary Spice. No, I'm not saying Scary Spice actually <laughs> talked about that stuff. No. She would hit us. I want to make a point, though, right? Is that Bo Selector started airing in 2002, mm. first series. That was two years after the Spice Girls broke up. <laughs> this movie came out in 2012, which was six years after the last regular episode of Bo Selector. That is how timely the jokes are here. Yeah. <laughs> like, do you think he just didn't have... Like, do you think he had like four pages of script that were just I like? I don't think they had that. One was just like, okay, ejaculate, genital jokes, Kelly Brook, celebs, I guess. I, I can and tell you what. That four post-it letter. notes, and that is all they had. Yes, and that's yeah, that's that's how I imagine it. I can tell you what the original pitch was because they pitched it to <laughs> Sam fuck. Oh, fudging oh, Raimi. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> they did what? <laughs> Sam Raimi. They pitched it to Sam Raimi. Right, Shut the on. front door. Let me make let me make something clear is that Ashley has watched this movie twice, once regularly and once with the commentary on. I'm a very ill man. I was I be <laughs> having the digital copy, I He's couldn't sick. do that. So Ashley's gonna have insight that me and Dan don't. Help. <laughs> Send help. Um yeah, so the director, I forget his name, Paul something? Who cares? Um, so the the director and uh, Lee Francis mm. um, met Sam Raimi at a party, and they began pitching this film to him. It was the exact same film, but instead of a phone, Keith Lemon invents the sausage sandwich, and Sam Raimi just goes, "What? What? What? What?" And so that's why they <laughs> lost him. Oh God! <laughs> oh, ah. Oh. I almost feel bad for them mm. after that. Let me think about that. No. I said almost. No, I, I said almost. I don't feel bad for them. I can't. <coughs> Gary Barlow shows up at 8 minutes and 34 seconds. Yep. Are you going to name every one of them? Cameos aren't jokes. No, I... they're not. Cameos aren't jokes. References not aren't jokes. Not even when you call them Simon Pegg for no reason. This, yeah. <laughs> he calls him Simon Pegg for no reason. And then with that joke is repeated later on. Yeah. It's not a good enough joke. It's not a joke, number one. In the commentary. No. And it's, it doesn't warrant being repeated. In the commentary, he bumps into Simon Pegg, like, in the real life, and says, I mentioned you want a movie. And Simon Pegg went, yeah, all right. <laughs> <laughs> do, do you find it amazing that, like, really, anyone who's worth their salt doesn't want to associate with Lee Francis? Like, this is not, this is not. Seems to be. This is not, the, this is not quality. You know, it's it's bad. It's so bad. I've got to say, I think these are possibly the cheapest sets I think I've ever seen. Yeah, like it's horrible, really horrible. Mm-hmm. At nine minutes forty five seconds, when he's at the in, the inventors convention, mm. invention convention, invention convention. Thank you. Sorry. Get it right, you. Jed would up. show up and and do a dance <sighs> again. This is why I love one point five because I didn't have to sit there and, for the full like four minutes of that. And that that was the joke in the commentary. Question mark <laughs> in the commentary. In the commentary. <laughs> Let's go over to commentary corner. <laughs> commentary corner. They uh, they just said they turn up. They did turn up. They didn't plan for them. Keith Lemon just said, you, "You got dances. Do one of your dances." They did a dance. They left. <laughs> the end of commentary oh, corner. Join so us next much time. Plot. <laughs> I like <laughs> another thing I have about the thing is we're having like almost three separate conversations here. But that uh, when he pulls uh, the photo out of his wallet and he's got a picture in it. Why is that picture CG'd into the wallet? It's which, not. Which it's photo? Not. No, it's a legit picture in the director's wallet. Which oh, which huh. picture are we talking about? Um. He's got a picture of what's her name? Oh, uh, um, his girlfriend. Yeah, in the his, film. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Guys, I'm on Box Office Mojo looking at Keith Lemon the movie. <laughs> Keith Lemon the film. Yeah. Keith Lemon the film. Distributor unknown. <laughs> Runtime non applicable. Production budget non applicable. <laughs> in the commentary, uh, they. Let Pretty much, much within the first cost. five minutes, before the film's been released, they reference how bad reviews it's been getting. Only one source gave it a half-decent review, and I can't remember what that was. <laughs> a telegraph, maybe. Nuts. 
No, because on the box, <laughs> on the, on the box, box, nuts actually rated it something, didn't they? Yes, and in the front, do you remember the the review that's on the front of the box? It's him. It's bloody Keith Lemon. It's, it's Keith Lemon. It's the best blooming Mo- movie I'm in. Keith yeah. Lemon. So do you know what? Uh, as a side, do you know what else did that that Deadpool game that came out in the 360? They said they this game Keith is lemon awesome. on the cover. <laughs> Yeah, it did actually. It had lemon on its back. Oh, oh, that'll come that, up later. that was a driving point. That <laughs> yep. was a central pro- point. Anyway, back to the convention. I'm really struggling to find out how much this movie cost. Go on, <laughs> I back mean, to, you back should to have the already done your research, mate. Should have done, but there mate, was. I tell you what, there were so many rabbit holes I went down, I couldn't. Mate, I tell you what, I'll tell you how you can figure out what the budget is. Take your wallet, empty all the change onto the floor, and whatever falls out, that's the budget. I can find. I can tell you how much it earned at the box office worldwide. Is it nothing? No, it made a total of four million. What? And seventeen thousand pounds. What? And I guess the budget would have been. So they filmed in Belfast, mostly in Belfast. I genuinely cannot find out how much it cost to make. Say one point five mil. <laughs> Probably something like that. Yeah. I don't remember there being much advertising for it. So, so uh, I want to say six weeks of filming. Come on, back to the invention convention. All right, right. Um, the the Indian guy, Krishbinder. Yep. Krishbinder. Can I call him out for being racist? Can I call Keith Lemon out for being racist? No, you see, well, probably. No, 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 no. I gave this movie a point here mm. because they have Krishbinder, and this being the type of movie it is, I thought the movie was going to do some horribly racist jokes at right now yeah yeah okay and it didn't so i get i gave the I, point, I, I, I gave okay. the movie a point there i was waiting for that boot to drop i retroactively mm. take it away later on because there are racist jokes later on yeah. yes so yeah at this, this point is, this in time is this is point. what i'm doing yeah and does the scary spies thing from both selector count as blackface you know yes. what yes yeah yeah straight so up craig david oh yeah, yeah. so it's craig david yeah yeah so I can't stand this man. Right. So the bridge scene. No, no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm before then. I'm before then. Okay. Because at the Kush Vinda, uh, he's at the invention convention because he's invented the touchscreen phone. Yep. Yeah. Ashley. Yep. You watched this with the commentary. Yep. Does the DVD give any hints? Is there is there like a tie-in comic as to do, 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 is there any explanation as to when this movie is set? Because it's clearly set in a post Jedward world, in the and there were touch phones then. No. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what they say is, they they call back on it and they say, "Wouldn't it wouldn't it be nice if this came out the same time as an Apple phone released?" That's what they say. They, they That's men- it. Yeah, they mention. Oh, by the way, this is similar to other fruit based phone with a fruit on the back. Not naming any names, and that's that's the it. Pineapple. The, the so pineapple, it's, it's, pen it's pineapple. set in modern day, then. Yes, it's set yeah. in a post Jedward world. Yeah, where we already have <laughs> touchscreen phones. No, you, you make post, yeah, but we you do. Make, you make Jedward <laughs> sound like a nuclear apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> Twenty eighty three, post Jedward. That is that. Jedwards have fallen. How do you do your calendars? <laughs> <laughs> PJ, do one via Pi. Right, we calm? I think so. The bridge Slightly scene. Slightly calm. The bridge what, what scene. Bridge scene? <laughs> okay, he's got oh, his yeah, phone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's having a crisis. He's on the bridge. The Millennium Bridge. And he hallucinates his girlfriend. And that scene goes on and on and on. And it was hard not to swear. You, mm-hmm. you cut haven't told us. What happens in that scene? You just said it goes on and on. I will tell you what happens in that scene right now. So he's having a crisis and he imagines his girlfriend. Yes, he does. And they're having a talk. Yes, they are. And they have a kiss. Yes, they do. He asks her to nosh him off. Yes. Now, that, for our listeners, is fellatio. Yes. And so you get to see the whole act of her on her knees, giving him one. Except but that you don't. It's all in his imagination. So you get to watch him 
pretending to get a blowjob, pretending to have sex, doggy up against the rails, yeah. whatnot. And I believe this is where you get to see his CG penis. Not CG. No, it's a dummy, dummy cock. It's it's barely a dummy penis. It's clearly just a st- store bought mm. dildo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can, that, can he is, <laughs> that he is holding up against his trousers. Are we allowing? Are we allowing the c word to slide? What did he say? Dummy cock. Oh, we'll allow it. Yeah, we said chicken. Okay. Dummy cock bum. That's that's allowed. We'll allow it. We'll allow it. Doo doo face. <laughs> Fun. <laughs> uh, yeah, so at that point, I was, I was very because at you that point, were I was like, okay, bet, weren't you? Mm, I turned off one point five because like, okay, I like I should turn one point five off. I should try and watch this normally. Mm-hmm. Immediately went back on, <laughs> went back on to faster <laughs> speed. Immediately, sixteen minutes fifty seconds. We're at a strip club. Okay, so I genuinely thought when the strippers were there that they were CG'd on, like they were just <laughs> a CG layer and they weren't actually real. <laughs> It's not the case, because... Of course not. Coming at you from Commentary Corner. <laughs> commentary Corner, come on. <laughs> commentary Corner. They tried to find strippers and couldn't, because strippers, for some reason, don't want their mums to know what they do. And for some reason, their mums might watch this film. So <laughs> these are just glamour models, whatever they are. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, right. right. In my opinion, mm. if this is the sort of movie that you're making... And you're going to make the ladies get all of their bits out. The least you can do as the captain of this movie got his bum out. is get your actual bits out. Or, yeah. or a realistic replica. Not the obvious store-bought dildo. <laughs> no, he should have legit got his own bits out if they had their bits out. Yeah. It's Otherwise they fair, should right? be using their own store-bought... Cheap replicas. Because I can't imagine they got paid a lot of <laughs> like, money. You know, like, you know, those fake a, boobs a you get. A boob selector boob thing. Yeah. The yeah. fake ones you get for, like, those uh, eight, for, for rugby eight players yeah. on yeah. stag nights. Yeah. yeah, yeah, those. Um, So just after that, I was thinking, I was sitting there watching this. So I had to pause it and go, this movie cannot be real. This cannot be a real thing that's happening. <laughs> like, I just... It, it amazed it's me. It's hard. Or can, what it's can, hard to is fathom Is there anything else we real? can use other than movie? A series of 24 frames per second moving forward. Can we just... A waste of time. Images. Can we call it images? Images. These images. These moving images. Like... Movie it, picture film. This can't be real. There is no plot. There's no plot to this film. There is... Yeah. There is very, very, very little in the way of plot. I'll give you that. He invented the lemon phone. He invents the lemon phone. But he didn't. No, because touch phones already exist. And he gets... And Kush Vinder invented it. He gets, what, 92% for just promoting it? Yep. Yeah. 22-22. So he gets beaten up, right? Yes, this, thank you. 22-22, he gets beaten up. <laughs> and this is where I retroactively take away the Kush Vinder point, because Keith Lemon says that his dad is Billy Ocean and says, starts talking in a Rastafarian accent. Mm. But his dad is Billy Ocean. Billy Ocean isn't a Rastafarian. Yeah, yeah, true. And also, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> like, also, Billy Ocean isn't his dad. The Billy Ocean jokes. Is his dad. He's not his dad. It's Keith Lemon's dad. He's not his dad. If Keith Lemon is Billy a fictional Ocean... character, he can have a fictional dad. Billy, Billy Ocean, Ocean does not exist. Spoilers, Billy Ocean is in this movie, and <clears throat> Keith Lemon introduces him as my dad, everybody. And Billy Ocean's like, what the bloody are you talking about? I remember that. It was bloody hell, it's me. Yeah. It's me, Billy Ocean. <laughs> well, no, it's me, Billy Ocean. Oh, I'd like to point out, he's, yeah. he's correct because of the post-credits where he's like, I'd like to tell you, I found my real dad. And See? It's just someone who looks exactly like him. Also, you said the B word twice and I said it once, so fill up. You what? And heck could be counted as a bad word as oh, well. Are we, t- are we saying bloody? Three times. All right. That's a no, swear. No, 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 I wouldn't count. I wouldn't no, count that. No, no, no. I, I will take... I will take that because Dan is still quite a ways ahead of me. I'm miles ahead of you. And someone we, someone else needs to try this. Anyway, look, that the, the mugging scene, which is just awful. It's so it goes bad. On. The jokes, right? The, the, the jokes. Jokes, quote unquote, yep. Go on for too long. But, but everything is drawn out. The not funny is drawn out to the point where you want to stab a man. What, commentary you corner, what have you got to say? Commentary corner. Commentary corner, just in. There are a number of things about this scene. Okay. Um, the the main one I think I'll leave to last. Uh, the, the first one um, is initially this scene, and it's in the deleted scenes, 
uh, is gruesome. It's they're kicking seven shades of sugar out of him. Um, there's like four different takes in the deleted scenes of just kicking him when he's down, um, like taking his phone and whacking him with it. It's proper brutal. And then, so you know, they have that intermission afterwards. Yeah, that's why they put that in because I'm drawing you away from the from the the bad scene. That's kind of what like, he says, mm. but mm. it's not that bad in the theatrical cut. No, it's because in but in a deleted it's scene, kind it's kind of brutal, but it's very brutal. Um, and then, so h- how many muggers are there? Four. 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 One, one talks. Yes. One talks. The other three. Let's see if I have that direct quote. Huey, Dewey, and Louie. Are you going to say that one yep. direction? Okay. So the director, mm-hmm. he said, yeah, we just found three gay dancers and we had to teach them how to be tough. <laughs> Motherless goat. And then he says, maybe I should drink out and good flump. Yeah, maybe I shouldn't have said that. We'll we'll retract that. They didn't. They could not. It's in the comments. Obviously not. I'm out of drink. (laughs) You'll have to get a beer and start adding to it. (laughs) You could uh, you could give me that. So yeah, start adding with that. The the Keith's gin and tonic. Keith's in a conscience when it when he's being mugged when he gets knocked out. I hate him even more for that. He, yeah, Keith's in a conscient comes dancing onto the screen like. I just be mugged, I just be mugged to lighten the mood. I'm singing this song. I'm out for the count, but it won't be for long. Uh, 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 Hello and welcome to my inner conscience. Because funny, um, <laughs> he says that he's there to fill time until oh, yeah. Keith Lemon comes back are. around from being mugged. But this movie is an hour and twenty minutes with credits. In there should be corner. no time to fill. <laughs> in commentary corner, it's barely a flumping movie as it is. <laughs> it ba- it's, it's barely, barely a quali- feature flumping movie. It barely qualifies. <laughs> they say, like when they mention deleted scenes, mm. they say, "Oh yeah, we didn't delete the scenes because they were bad. We just didn't have time." Yes, you <laughs> women <laughs> did. <laughs> you had so much time to spare. <laughs> So much time. The movie, the the movie itself, minus credits, minus logos, theatrical cut, is an hour and sixteen minutes. There, there are short films longer than this. They get shown at Cannes. There are longer episodes of Doctor Who. (laughs) Oh, also, I want to say, episode of Sherlock is longer than this film. Yes, yes, it is. So yeah, I was. I mentioned that the people in the commentary were uh, Keith Lemon and the director. Yeah. Mm. And when I say Keith Lemon, I mean Keith Lemon. Any mention of Lee Francis is met with a "Who's Lee Francis?" Yep. Every character in this film, he treats as if they are the actor, and this is their first time acting. Uh, he's just brought them in off the street. Mm. Um, he doesn't know any actors. He's just just Keith Lemon, and that doesn't get old at all. Nothing he does gets old. He's so fresh. <laughs> Guys, I think this left a really sour taste in our mouths. Da, 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 da. 2807. <laughs> <laughs> I see sandbags. They're, I seem to have been sandbagged. We're talking Hasselhoff now. No, I'm talking Evil Steve. Uh-huh. <laughs> Who is also Lee Francis. <laughs> Evil Steve. We don't need double Lee <laughs> Francis. <laughs> God. Don't do his theme tune. <laughs> no, but that was funny, right? No. It was funny. You laughed. No. It was good. Were those where they make more fun of gays? Oh yes, they do. With those two? <laughs> the movie Later on. It's so misogynistic and homophobic. It's unreal. Uh, and racist and and just horrible. Every sort of phobic. Is it anti It's hydrophobic. It's it's, <laughs> it's almost it's, it's automatic. <laughs> It's systematic, it's hydrophobic, it's Keith Lemon. It's it's almost xenophobic. It's got grease on tobacco. Almost. And I mean xenophobic as in xenomorphs from Alien. <laughs> I mean xenophobic as Xena Warrior Princess. <laughs> oh, I've also just written down here, stop happening. <laughs> no, one of my one of my notes is I hope everyone lost money on this film. <laughs> this is Cameo the movie, and not Cameo the band, who are awesome. Just cameo the movie. I just want this this to stop happening. 
<laughs> Let's stop being a thing. We've been talking for so long about this movie that it's only an hour and 16 minutes. And I'm only at the 31st minute. Evil Steve. Before we get to Evil Steve, Blumin Varys turns up. Oh, yeah, Varys an is actor. in it. Oh, God, yeah. An actor turns up and does acting poorly. <laughs> no. <laughs> he was never going to give a tenth of a percent for this film, and I do not blame him. I think his name's Tom. Something. Our podcast is going to be longer than that <laughs> film. Yes, it is. Good gravy. Good gravy. Anyway, Evil Steve. He I, won't. I can't. I can't tell it as a character. Can we just skip him? No, no, he's in the movie. Let's cover him. Come on. Uh, oh, well, we can we miss completely Mr. Vern Troyer and the fixer. No, no, he's not. He's not here yet. He's he's after the mugging. He's not. Evil Steve comes before. Does he? Yep. Evil Steve intros at twenty eight oh seven, and in uh, thirty one minutes exactly, we get Vern Troyer. Okay, so we've got spoilers. So Evil Steve turns up, and Kevin Bishop has brown sauce on his face oh, and a wig. Yeah, Kevin Bishop pretends to be Lee Francis. So if Kevin, Kevin, Kevin Bishop B- pretends to be Keith Lemon. And if you thought the movie couldn't get, if Keith Lemon couldn't get any worse, <laughs> leave two of them. But Kevin Bishop does a bad imitation of him. Kevin Bishop's character is essentially if <sighs> Douglas Orange, Douglas Orange. It's I, I don't want to say the word because it's it's not a swear word, it's just a bad word. It's like if someone goes goes to you and says act like a mentally challenged person. It's <laughs> we'll, 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 to quote you know Tropic what? Thunder. Mm. Yeah. You don't he do. He goes that. he goes full, full retard. Full yes. But oh yeah. god. And it's literally to the point of he just sticks his tongue in his top lip and goes, no, 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 no. He does. He, it's, he does. Yeah. It uh, is just, hello, hello, I'm Douglas Thomas. Uh, I, I want to hit something <laughs> so hard. Like, like if you were a I, bad person I am and a, you were going to uh, make fun of someone who is mentally handicapped, you you do the uh, uh, yeah. uh, tongue in your bottom lip and go, uh, and that is Kevin Bishop's character in this movie. That is what mm. he does. I I feel offended for everyone on their, on their behalf, behalf yeah. because of this film. And I just, like, I want to hit Lee Francis so hard in the face with a solid object. Whatever I had to just hand at that break moment. Break his hand for real. The <laughs> whole movie is reprehensible. It's such a disgusting film. And it's, I am so sorry. <laughs> like I'm so sorry I made you watch it. Like the more flashbacks I have of this, the more I want to pick up the chair that has all the accordion equipment on <laughs> and just hit you with it. I am not the accordion I am, equipment. I am sorry, all my accordions. <laughs> mm. Thirty-one minutes in. <laughs> if I can remember my German swear words, I mean, mm. nine. That's his for button. Thirty-one minutes in. Vern Troyer shows up. <sighs> Yep, Vern Troyer shows up. I know. I, 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 I would give the movie a point here because they don't make Vern Troyer's height the butt of a joke. Not at all. No. I didn't give it a point because at, at 31 minutes in, I no longer trust this movie. No. So, no point. Nil point. Uh, no what, point. What made you lose trust? Um, it's difficult to say. <laughs> I mean... Where did, where did the film touch you, Lewis? Give me a teddy, I'll show you. <laughs> There's... Here's a post selector teddy. I, I have some ideas. Oh, like a... it touched me on my range. <laughs> <laughs> uh, mm. Okay, so Vern Troyer shows Vern Troyer up. Shows up. He's the, the fixer, is yes. he called? Archimedes. Mm-hmm. Archimedes. And he helps Keith Lemon get his, his feet back on the ground. Yeah. As it were. And... They go to see Hasselhoff because Hasselhoff has a talk show. Mm-hmm. Uh, when Hasselhoff's uh, scene turned up, at that point, I felt like I'd aged. <laughs> like, like I'd aged quite a bit. More than yeah. Hasselhoff? More, well, <laughs> Hassel, I felt like time had like lurched forward and I'd I'm lost like a year. I'm with you. This movie feels so long. It's so hard to sit through. It's, it's like you found the ultimate like cat that does not want to go anywhere and you're trying to just like you're trying to remove it from somewhere and it's just fighting you at every possible turn yeah 
you know. Then when you get a pet that really doesn't want to go to the vet, that's this movie when it fights oh, you and attacks yeah. you and tries to cut your face off. But you just want to end it. You just want to end that pet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was saying, but <laughs> someone took the analogy there. So he, so he goes on his talk show. And goes Kelly on David Brooks Hasselhoff's there. talk show, yeah. And you get the little scene where he's talking about oh, I had a dream about you, Kelly Brook. And he acts like an utter scumbag. Yes. Ah. This is our main character. This, this is, is our the protagonist. Man that we are meant to feel endearing. Uh, endearing While he's towards. wearing a Michael Jackson costume. While he's wearing a Michael Jackson costume. Commentary Corner, his actual outfit that he bought from home. He has that. <laughs> I don't doubt it. Uh, I d- has anyone ever watched Celebrity Juice? I tried. I have. Um, it's painful. You know, sometimes it's okay. Uh, well, the original, like the earlier episodes I used to watch, I haven't seen it in years. Um, when Lee Francis isn't talking, it's fine. Yeah, you see when the, there are good characters, they bring in decent panellists sometimes. Most of the time, it's just like Larry Lamb or some EastEnders reject. Um, <laughs> or people off the only way is Essex and Rizzle Kicks and Jedwood and whatever. Mm. Um, but they, they did have funny moments. There were very cringy moments, like go into this uh, glass booth with a fat naked woman and fill around and say what you can see. Yeah. That sort of crap. Crap is a good word. Crap's but, fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's, a, it's like a game you play in Vegas. It is. It's fine. Crappies. Yeah, so I mean, I haven't seen it since. It's like, not exactly highbrow, though, is it? It's oh, not, not at all. It's no. it's comedy from like twenty years ago when being, you know, when being a prick to people imagine, was funny. Yeah, imagine if your thirteen-year-old self got with all your thirteen-year-old mates and made a game show. That's what it is. Yeah, and on 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 Celebrity Juice, Keith Lemon is, you know, he's 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 still. Pretty bad. He called you know Holly Willoughby. Holly Willoughby talks a lot about wanting to smash people's back doors and whatnot. It's it's still bad, but this movie movie is taking that to the nth degree. He is, it's vile. Mm. The stuff he gets away with here. Keep so, them alive and uncut. And this is the person we're meant to feel endeared towards. So I I have one note here. I skipped over, but I'm gonna I'm gonna it's say like it if anyway. Hitler's your main character. I know. In an animated movie. Downfall is a very good film. No, no, no. Hitler is the main character in a Pixar animated film. And, oh, no. He's, he's lost his favourite... Von Uppen. He's lost his favourite pocket watch. Go on an adventure to now. find it. <laughs> I, hope, I hope those pesky Jews don't get in the way. <laughs> good old Hitler. That, so a Disney Pixar. That is right. that is this that is what this movie is trying to make us feel. Oh, it's trying to make us Hitler's feel love just towards all over Hitler. himself. <laughs> you know what? I'm not even going to argue that point. It's a good point. <laughs> not at all. I I have a note here. Go on. And this is like the first time I actually swore on my notes, which was what I can't take this. Do absolute fucks find this funny? Oh, you double double poor for that. My glass is nearly full. <laughs> His cup runneth over. Cup runneth over with naughty words. 37 minutes in. Still going. It's got lemon on back. It's got lemon on back. Lemon on back. (laughs) I thought, on back? Oh, that's a good film. Oh, no, you don't mean that. It's got lemon Uh, on back too. He, the, the, Chris Binder's typicity touch phone is rebranded by Keith Lemon. He puts a lemon sweet on the back. No, we don't know what it is. It's just a squidgy thing in his pocket. It's a squidgy lemon that lights thing. up. And he calls it the lemon phone. No, what's and everyone phone. goes crazy for Loses it. Loses their minds. No, it's actually like a lemon sweet. Um, what's Vern Troy gives it to him? Oh, does he? Because you here, have a lemon thing. Something like that, yeah. Can't remember what it was. Okay. Everyone goes crazy for the lemon phone because it's got lemon on back. Yeah, but what's the actual name of the phone? The lemon phone. The Keith Lemon phone. It's Keith the Lemon phone, the Keith Lemon phone. Oh, right. It's yeah. the name of the phone. That's it, the name of the phone. Full it, title. It is, it is the most obvious <sighs> commentary on the consumers of Apple products. No. Yes. <laughs> and it's, it is very possible that the movie has worn me down and lowered <sighs> my standards. But Hasselhoff's reaction tickled me. Yes. Yeah, me too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I couldn't find joy in this film. <laughs> 
I couldn't find joy in this film. Not a big tickle, not a two-handed ribber. Just just a feather on the neck. There were a couple of moments. Mainly with Vern Troyer, because he was one of those who actually tried. No, see, like, after but, that, I just was like, stop happening. Yeah, I, I, take, again. I take this point away again two minutes later, because they do this joke for two minutes. The people reacting to the lemon phone. Oh, it's got lemon on back! Two minutes of this... 76 minute movie you know what this, we could have done instead of this it's podcast? got lemon on back it's got lemon on back oh my god it's got lemon on back made that joke <laughs> no yeah literally just take that clip so why why would you watch the keith lemon movie it's got lemon in it that's it and then because the reporter just said there is no other reason is there no it's just got lemon in it yeah i have a stupid point a stupid point, point from a stupid have. movie uh, 38 minutes and 40 seconds. God. I've written Jelly Brook here, but her name is Kelly Brook. All right. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she gives him her number. I he says, call me anytime. And he calls her right there and then. Uh huh. What fun does she have? He calls her right there and then from the landline on the wall instead yes. of the lemon phone, <laughs> the amazing <laughs> traditional lemon phone that he's holding in his other hand. I missed that point. It's a simple boy from Leeds. This movie. That's I, I, is that is that is that a joke? Is that a funny no joke? Or no, is that a trick corner? Just point. being stupid. Commentary corner. Phone doesn't work. It's just a prop, mate. No. Yeah. No. Uh, but you didn't see that coming. Oh, right. So you could act. You could act and hold it up to your head and pretend. No, you Lewis. don't really have to call Kelly Brook. <laughs> Lewis, that costs money. <laughs> you don't really have to call Kelly Brook. Right. Don't tell these people when they can and can't act. I, I have it's, a point They know here. they can't. <laughs> I have a point here, right? This this movie, this is what an anti-joke movie would be. This right? movie is anti-comedy, yes. What When you want something that, like a comedy that isn't <laughs> comedy, funny that isn't funny, jokes that are not jokes, this is that movie. Because nothing is funny. Every, like timing is off all over the place. There's no setup or payoff. There's no building jokes. There's no nothing like that. There's no timing. There's no delivery. No. Nothing. There's just words happening in a sequence. Yes. This this is if you ever want to look at how to do an absolutely anti comedy anti joke movie, you go watch that. You throw up because you hate yourself, <laughs> and you realise that this man tried to. Take um, all the things we've advanced towards in history back by a couple of years, and then you go, okay, now I know not how to not write a comedy. Yeah, so go back to before we had touchscreen phones, and there you go. So that is this <laughs> yeah, film. Yeah, that is this film. This movie is one of one of a handful. There are not many movies that hold this prestige, but it has zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Does it really? Wow. Yeah. I am not surprised, actually. Zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes, but a user score on Amazon of three point seven out of five. Whoa! <laughs> Tell me, it's just people going, "Yeah, I bought this for my mates." Like some, it is. It is. <laughs> oh, I wanted to bring some great reviews for you to great five star reviews from idiots that I could read out to you. But it is just, I bought this from my mate. He says he likes it. <laughs> or really good fast shipping. Thanks, Amazon. Yeah, yeah. My, my <laughs> five stars. My favorite Amazon reviews are the ones that says, "I've not got it yet, but it looks great." Oh. Or, or um, I, I bought it as a gift for a friend. Um, it's in the post. I'll let you know when he's got it. <laughs> <laughs> Audience score on Rotten Tomatoes was nineteen percent as well. So that's generous. That is very generous. Do you uh, do you have any research on what other movies have zero percent on Rotten Tomatoes? Yes, I do, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you. Let me tell you what movies Keith Lemon the film is he are equally as good as. Mm. Police Academy Four. Okay. Just as good as Keith Lemon the movie. Jaws Four. Okay. Yep. Just as good as yeah. Keith Lemon the movie. Uh Ballistics X versus Sever. Oh god! I, oh, that's a that's a memory trip. Keith Lemon, the movie, is equally as good as Super Baby's Super Baby Geniuses Two. They made a second one of that. 
Yes. Keith Lemon, the movie, is just as good as Bucky Larson, Born to be a Star, and The Ridiculous Six. I have no idea what that film is. It's where it's... Keith Lemon pretends to be famous and a bunch of cameos turn up. That's called the Keith it's... Lemon film. Okay, thanks. It is bad. Oh. Keith Lemon, the movie, according to Rotten Tomatoes, is just as good as Mac and Me. Oh, yeah. That's about right. Well, those, pers- are, those are some movies that have 0% on Rotten Tomatoes, just as good as Keith Lemon. But Prestige I would Club. rather watch any of those yeah. over this again. I'd happily watch Police Academy I've 4. I've seen Jaws mm. the Revenge multiple times. I've seen Police Academy 4 multiple times. Yep. I will watch them again. Yeah. I've seen Keith Lemon the movie multiple times. Oh, you fuck, boy. <laughs> so, he gets his money. Yes. He, he gets his <coughs> women. He gets his power. Yes. Gets his Scarface. He gets his badges. We don't need no stinking badges. And he's hanging out. He's essentially, he's hanging out with Kelly Brook. Yeah. Who is now, who I thought was just going to be in this for a couple of minutes. Who's now a main staple of this film. I thought, yeah. well. She's like second build, I think. Strap yep. in, I guess. Here we are. And uh, Have you got any notes before we get to the the scene? Oh, the, no. Yes, I do. Okay. Bring him up first. Before, before we get to the scene, at 42 minutes in, during this whole Keith Lemon is rich now, uh, 42 minutes, Kelly Brook is fellating, vigorously fellating two asparagus oh, yeah. in a public restaurant. Oh. F- yeah. <laughs> and I, I just wonder, does she need this movie that badly? Why did anyone's agent let them do this movie? Commentary Corner. Commentary you, Corner, do you have... Do you have anything? What happened? She's Surely try again get, later. Commentary Surely. Corner is out of service. You could <laughs> Damn get it. paid more for opening opening a shop than what you would have got paid for doing this movie. Hmm. You could get paid more for volunteering than and doing this movie. And then it's not on celluloid. I doubt this movie was on no. celluloid. <laughs> <laughs> celluloid. Um, right. What banter? I'll sell your Lloyd. And at 43 minutes 20 seconds during the businessman of the year scene, hmm. which was the cheapest set I have ever <laughs> seen on a movie, ever. Was that cheaper? Was that the cheapest set or was it the invention convention was the cheapest no. set? Because they were both. They were the th- businessman <sighs> of the year, which was just some yellow ruffled curtains and fairy lights in the background. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that's definitely cheaper. Yeah, that was definitely at worse. This, at this point, Keith has been to the invention convention, Aye. gone on TV, mm. sold the phone, yeah. become a billionaire, yeah. bought a penthouse, uh-huh. courted Kelly Brook, oh, aye. and won Businessman of the Year. Uh-huh. And for all this time, his, his girlfriend had just been hanging from the ceiling at Evil Steve's? Two days. Oh, what a feeling. Two, two days. Commentary Corner is two days. When she's two days. hanging from the ceiling. Yeah, well, that took place in two days. It's handy that <laughs> Businessman of the Year just happened to fall around that time. Well, isn't it, it just? Yeah. Her wrist must really hurt. Yeah. <laughs> Unless they got some like velvet rope. I'm so glad that Commentary Corner is here. <laughs> because one of my major gripes with this movie is, what is the time frame? <laughs> I still don't I believe... I would have known if I hadn't I wouldn't have known. That. No. And I still don't believe that it's two days. Because... <laughs> Because See, he's done to the invention ridiculous. convention, bought a million poles, gone on TV, sold the phone, become a billionaire, bought a penthouse, courted Kelly Brook and won Businessman of the Year. I still don't believe it's two days, but thanks, Commentary Corner. <laughs> oh, yeah, we forgot to mention what he does before the phone. And he's selling these, like, sec- he calls it security poles. Yes, a security which pole. Which is just basically a, bol- uh, a, a, a collapsible bollard mm-hmm. on yeah. the floor. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's all it is. He invents touchscreen phone and a bollard. Things that exist. <laughs> Things that exist. exist. <laughs> Things that exist. Oh, so okay. So a sausage what, sandwich. I, I'm. That's probably meant. That's probably them trying to do a joke. Like, oh, get a joke out. It's, yeah, it has couldn't. to be some Things sort of. Things that exist. Also, some sort of phallic joke, but they never really play on it, which is weird. But couldn't you just make a funny invention like in Gremlins? No, because that would require talent. Thought. And thought. Remember the first thing they go to and they thought was a good idea was a 
blooming sausage sandwich. It's so stupid. I can prove to you how little talent this movie has. We don't need to prove. We've the seen screen. the film. No, I don't. I don't need to prove it to it's you. It's in the credits. It's not on that screen. That screen's off. The scene. Ah, <laughs> God, this drink is horrible. <laughs> The scene, and you know, you two know which one I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. The C4901 to 4940. Shall I describe it? I've described the last, I've described the bridge scene. Shall I do this one too? No, I want, I want Ashley to describe this scene. You, you want... got, you'd got to describe the bridge scene. Ashley, describe to me what happens at 4901 to 4940, please. Keith Lemon gets out bath. Yeah. He gets out bath. Kelly Brooks is already outside bath. Mm-hmm. Keith Lemon approaches. Kelly Brooks in a aroused manner mm-hmm. uh, because she has taken her dressing gown off and she's now that's right in a she's, bikini she's wearing brown in panties and you you see you see her take it off and then you see a shot of floor and then panties fall on floor mm-hmm. and then he's like oosh because that's a catchphrase yes one of yeah he Keith Lemon has many catchphrases they are oosh Bang tidy. Shitting. Shitting. See you through a week. I'll see you through a window. Smash your back doors in. And smash your back doors in. <laughs> That's it. That's him as a character. Very sharp turn at the end there. Catchphrases. Uh, in case you didn't know, you so hear he them goes, throughout the movie. All and the he time. looks he looks at the naked lady in front of him, and immediately 150 pressurized egg whites shoots all over him. <laughs> Come on, egg whites. <laughs> Fresh, <laughs> because the director is laying on his back underneath them both with a pump <laughs> oh, God. what's it simulating um uh milk in a for 39 uh, in... seconds oh i'm um, sorry uh ejaculation 39 full seconds <laughs> it's this simulating ejaculation yeah and the shot just holds. The shot holds on Keith Lemon's face, covered in his own, covered his own in goo. his his own, his own um, Chicken man fluids. <laughs> While he ooh, ooh, and, mm, ooh, mugging for the camera, mm. which is all he ever does when there is a camera. It's just this time he's done it covered in goop. Lem- and it, it, it was at this point that. I contemplated going and getting my bat, my steel bat, uh-huh. driving to where you live and beating you to death. I I wanted to hit, I wanted to Did hurt you, you so much. And no. I wouldn't have blamed you. <laughs> I did some maths here. Mm-hmm. Quick maths. When Keith is ejaculating over himself uh-huh. for 39 full seconds. Uh-huh. That is 0.81% of this movie. <laughs> that is just just shy of 1% of this movie is Keith Lemon ejaculating into his own face. Oh, God. So hang on, that's still shorter than that intermission we had where he's just saying he's filling time. Yeah. Jesus. So we could add that to the earlier scene where he's ejaculating over us. Yeah, and that makes a full percent. Makes a full percent. A full percent yeah. of this movie is ejaculate. Good times. That's, that, yeah. that's more than some pornos. That is... Because yeah. they could, just have the money shot and then you're done. I could probably pull up 40 pornos and have less of a percentage than that. Yeah. For money shots. But during that scene, again, this may be because the movie has lowered my standards that much, Kelly Brook does some fairly all right comedy reaction faces? Question mark? No. I, I think if she wants to concentrate on acting, she deserves better than this in Piranha 3D. Hang on, wasn't it just a dis, a disappointed slash disgusted face? It was. Which yes, it was. Is the multiple, normal face you make at Keith Lemon? Multiple disappointed, disgusting faces. I think. Yeah, like, and if you, ooh, ah, ooh, ooh. But that's. I mean, it takes acting not to look like that when looking I at know, Keith Lemon. I know, but I thought Kelly Brook put some effort into that scene, and you know. Gotta give something to the movie. I'll just reiterate. No, you really, really don't. I'll reiterate. I hope that she and, along with everyone else, just lost money on this film. Pro- I, no, I doubt they did. I doubt they did. Yeah. Yeah. So, I have. I like. So after that, 
And I'm sitting there wondering myself, because I've checked out now. I no longer care. Uh-huh. Like, you I, cared at one point. I had to care because we were doing this. Okay. Right? And as as the rage and all that built up in me and the hate, I I realized I can I can let that go. I can give up. I can give up. Yep. I can give up and I can let it all go and it can be easy. But no, this movie doesn't play like that. This movie did not let go because it kept giving me new things to get angry about. Uh huh. So I sat there and I started thinking, okay, how much of the budget went on celebrities? Mm-hmm. Nothing, as, Ashley, as Commentary Corner told us, they all did it for free. Yep. All the walk-ons, the cameos, yeah. Crazy. Tits. How much money went on them? Probably you. Paying uh, uh, well, glamour models. Oh, sorry, for the party at the end, that mm. was mostly uh, shot in Northern Ireland, so it would have been a plane ticket there. Okay. That and the, uh, the was it the glamour models they hired? How much went on them? And that jizz joke. Yep. <laughs> 150 I, eggs. Because I would love to. It's expensive. <laughs> It's mm. is that free range jizz. <laughs> At fifty minutes, Douglas so. Orange gets on a bus to London. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. And once again, I ju- I was just so confused about the timeline of this movie. It's meant to be a joke. <laughs> it's, it's meant to be a joke here, where he asks, "Where are we going? Where are you going?" To London. Where are you going? To London. Where are you going? To London. We're all going to London. Yeah. Yay. Commentary corner. The woman who said that is from Liverpool. Thanks, extra commentary. Great. <laughs> <laughs> we, you, do you know what? We're, listeners, we've, you, st- we've, there's still 25 minutes of this movie to go. Listeners, the, you may have noticed that the will to live is draining out of us just from reciting this film. You can tell that this was this director's first piece. and def- Piece? <laughs> his first... Um, well, we're not calling it a movie. His first celluloid. <laughs> <laughs> um, and definitely his first commentary bit because he'd done his homework the night before of just every single person who'd been in the film so that you could say their name. Yeah. And it was, oh, I need to thank this person. Oh, now I need to thank this person. Um, this person did the makeup. And uh, uh, this woman, she's from Liverpool. She was on the bus. <laughs> okay. Not adding much. <laughs> no, I mean, they're throwing I, a scraps here. Yeah, literally, I've, I've kind of glossed over this, but the beginning of this is it's just him saying... Oh, here's here's a here's a person like here here is um, uh, Emma Bunton. Here is uh, Ronan Keating, whatever. Here mm. are three gays we had to train to make tough. <laughs> yeah, but he literally says, "Oh look, mm. look at the over there. There's a there's a person who's famous," and then Keith Lemon will just shout over him about unfunny anecdote of said person. <laughs> Thank you for that collective sign. Fifty one thirty. He has a toga party, right? No, no, no. 51.30, no. he's getting ready for a toga party. But we spend a full one minute of this 76-minute long images yeah. describing the plot of Rambo. Oh, God. Tell you what, that... Which, in a better movie, could be funny. Do you know why that was in the commentary corner? In this <laughs> film, all I can think is you're struggling to reach 80 minutes. <laughs> Hold on, Commentary Corner has something here. Go on, Commentary Corner. That is Lee Francis's genuine party trick. He knows that off by heart because that's the one trick he does at parties. It's not a trick. It's not. That's, that's just talking. It's, yep. I, I, if that's the case, I can do that trick all day. <laughs> Dan, pick a movie you like. Okay, Old Boy. Give me the plot of Old Boy in under a minute. Go. Okay, um, man who's kind of a, a rubbish guy to his family, kind of a rubbish person in general. He gets kidnapped one day, doesn't know why. He's held prisoner for like 15 years of his life. Suddenly he's let out. He's told, uh, he's just let out into the world. Off and goes, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, he finds a guy, puts him in prison. He says, if you can figure out why I put you in prison in five days, I'll let you kill me by turning off a button in my heart. And what turns out from there is a very twisted tale of revenge. What a trick. <laughs> Mate. Put me on X Factor. Got a life with a funkin' party. <laughs> Oosh. There we go. There's a catchphrase. Some there's people catchphrase. say you're the life of the party because you can describe a movie or two. You should go into character acting, Dan. I really should. You should jizz on yourself. 
<laughs> That's where your life is heading. <laughs> Lee Francis is a millionaire because of this. You were not just because of this. Why'd you say that? <laughs> Why right. you say these in things? In 2016, Lee Francis gives another out-of-character interview with The Sun. Who call it an exclusive <laughs> first ever? Never mind the fact that the one I mentioned earlier was from 2007. Yep. Well well done, The Sun. Um, no, Lee Francis says... 2016. Oh, right. So they're only, you know, <laughs> they're 10 years late. Uh, Lee Francis says, quote, I never try to offend anyone. I'm not one of those shock comedians. He's just spent a full minute jizzing over himself. Is jizz a swear word? Do I need to pour some out? No, we've all said it. Um, I, I had to flip you the bird. It wasn't at you. It was at Lee Francis's comment there. I will pour. And three. the sun. What poor journalism? What <sighs> he poor journalism? I googled Lee Francis interview. <laughs> First thing that came up. Wasn't the Sun? It was the one from 2007. That is the top result. That is what the journalists at the Sun have failed to do by saying that this was an exclusive first ever. No, they get probably... angry at the Sun no. now. They probably knew and didn't care. But let's not talk about the Sun. American listeners, the Sun is a newspaper owned by Rupert Murdoch. Isn't well, it's it's a toilet paper, it really. Is a toilet paper for hamsters. Politics. Um, so the the toga pie, right? Yes. Rizzle Kicks turns up. Yes. Who cares? Nope. Into the toga pie. Things are happening. There are celebrities. Who who cares? There are many, well, celebrities. <laughs> people. There are people. Ronan Keaton is a, a genuine celebrity. Was yeah. a genuine celebrity. Yes. yes. He's actually pretty good on the talk is, show radio. And he is the subject of the Simon Pegg joke again. Yeah. It's commentary. And they had Gary Barlow, who's still a celebrity. Yeah. Jason Donovan? No. no. Okay, he shot me down. Fifty-eight oh four. Lee Francis is really betting on you being familiar with his, his entire body of work. Yeah, really. Because yeah, the right, bear no, shows be. up. Yeah, when I mate, I I saw red because I like, no, don't go there. The bear, who who was a bit character from Bo Selector and had a spin-off in 2005 called A Bear's Tale. It ran for one series before being unceremoniously cancelled. So unceremoniously was it cancelled, in fact, that it doesn't even get its own Wikipedia page. It doesn't appear on Lee Francis's television appearances. It's just lumped in with the Bo Selector episodes as a quote-unquote sort of series four <laughs> in the Bo Selector narrative. Don't give me that. <laughs> that <that's laughs> give what, me those words. That is what Wikipedia says. You have to dig deep to find it. But there he is at 54.08. You better know Lee Francis's work if you're going to watch Keith Lemon the film. So, so this is happening, right? This toga party. And I suppose this is where he's supposed to have his change of heart, right? But all I could kept thinking about was Asian Elvis. Yes. What is with racist Elvis? What is with racist Elvis? Do you have anything from your commentary corner? Uh, they had a five-minute conversation where... I'm loving this. <laughs> previously... Um, I can pull up something that really pisses me off and you go, I have an answer. <laughs> previously, the director had told Keith Lem- I See, I don't know how true this is of whether Keith Lemon had been in character. Mm. Um, but previously, the director had told Keith Lemon that this was the guy from The Hangover. Yeah. God. God. So when he comes on in the commentary, Keith Lemon goes, Oh, look, it's him from The Hangover. And the director goes, eh, No, no, it wasn't. And it's like, Oh, you, you, bad word. I, I believed you. Uh, yeah. And also, the majority, a good 75% of this so. Toga Party commentary is, Look at her. I bet. Yeah. I bet. Just, yeah. They lump Billy Ocean into this movie. Mm. I hope. So I hope they he drag took up most poor of the Billy budget. Ocean in. It. <laughs> but I, I'm just realizing what you're telling me is we'll get back to Billy Ocean, who has better <laughs> things to do than this film. Clearly not. Lee Francis can't tell Asians apart. Is what you're telling me. I don't care if it's a joke <laughs> or not. That's what you're telling me. That's what the commentary has led me to believe. Allegedly. Allegedly. No, 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 no. Lee Francis may be able to. Keith Lemon can't. We can say 
whatever we want about Keith Lemon. That's true. Okay. Because he's a fictional character and you can't you can't yeah. libel Keith or Lemon. slander or do defamation of character on a fictional character. Okay. Can you? Keith Lemon's a post top. Doesn't even have a passport. He is a post top. I will I will alter that statement and say that Keith Lemon has no idea <laughs> the difference between Asians. Yeah. Keith Lemon has sexual thoughts about his own mother. What? <laughs> I thought we were just going for this, no? <laughs> no, I just thought that was that came up in commentary corner. And oh. I was, I was going to say, really? Oh. Silly boy. Pour some out. I've given it to Dan. Keith Lemon ate my hamster. <laughs> yeah, Keith Lemon ate my... So, I, I have the power of commentary corner. I Yeah, I just... I break down here. I've just got... I have no good things to say. And the fact that the boobs were not fake as evidenced by the... <laughs> Post credit, the post credits that nonsense that's in this film. Yeah. Mm. Look, guys, it's post credits. Fifty six nineteen. I'm not at the credits yet, mate. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm I mean, done by this point. <laughs> good, gosh, damp. I mean, Keith Lemon is really, he really wants you. He's really betting on the fact that you know everything. That he's ever done because during the party, Avid Merrion and Craig show up. God, yeah. I, yeah, I didn't uh, recognize Craig or remember him until the commentary. No, I doubt anybody will because right. Avid Merrion was a Lee Francis character. He was de facto host of Bo Selector. Mm. Craig Phillips was the winner of the very first Big Brother in the, here in the UK in the year 2000 and was a running joke on Bo Selector. Once again, Bo Selector. Started airing in 2002. And yet, once again, <laughs> this movie came out in 2012 and is about Keith Lemon, a character not from Bo Selector, a character that was made for a completely different TV channel. But it's all right, they, they didn't have time to add in all the quality deleted scenes because they, they needed to put this, this proper content of old past material in there. There is every chance, though, that Keith Lemon fans were not born when the first Big Brother aired. Or, hell, when Bo Selector was a thing. Yeah, Keith Lemon fans may never have seen Bo Selector. Mm. Lee Francis lives in character. Mm. Keith Lemon's for ITV, Bo Selector was Channel 4. They may never have seen it. Yeah. Stop! <laughs> We can't stop though because now we have at this toga party, <coughs> we have it's the poor decision making. Yes, but every turn we have this scene where it's like, oh, okay, in comes whatever orange his name was Douglas Orange. Thank you. Yeah. Um, comes in and like we have the whole, oh, stop being an idiot, and we get the, I guess the the last conflict, the the conflict of the film, I guess, comes now at the the last twenty minutes. Uh huh. Where everyone's faces do, like everyone puts their face to the side, and that's oh. a and side effect of the phone. Oh, it made me so angry. <laughs> <laughs> One hour and five minutes, the movie reveals that the lemon phone has this horrific side effect. And I, I think, in, in my logic brain, that the movie wants to be a gross out comedy. Doesn't have the budget. We're, we're going to get everybody at this, at this big toga party, we're going to get everybody. Like gushing blood from their ear on each other or something, and it's going to be proper gross out, and you know, might get a laugh out of me. No, no, you just you just pull a funny face. Yeah, no makeup, no special effects. No makeup, no CGI, no special <laughs> effects. You just put your face to the side like that. So when you when you're talking, when you've got lines to say, your face will occasionally slip back to normal, but then yeah. you put it back afterwards. Unless you're Kelly Brook, where your lines are ADR back in a deeper tone. It's so bizarre. But... This movie is anti-comedy. <laughs> Mate, that would require a budget with which, with which, blah, 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 which this movie clearly doesn't have because you <laughs> cannot find a budget list. None the of us can. The horrific side effect is your face just goes a bit... Ugh. And I, yeah. I don't not, know... Not even your face, just your lower lip. Just is your lower is lip. this just meant to be... I mean, I might just be stupid here, but is this meant to be a reference to Stallone? Because they keep mentioning him... I, d I don't know. Yeah, because they never, they don't really go. Commentary corner. It is meant to be a reference to. You've got no idea. idea. No, the only thing they say is that person's rather good at pulling a face. That person's rather good at pulling a face. Oh, God. Look at all these celebrities. It's not these a are hard the ones that can pull. pull a face. No. 
Oh, 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 I've done it. It's like Ronan Keating did good face. Gino De Campo did good face. <laughs> Others give good head. God. Don't tell. <laughs> don't tell me that was a legit line. Nah. Gosh. Thank God. Uh, that's that's purely from my comedy banks. <laughs> Paddy <laughs> McGuinness has the best joke in this movie. See you at sequel. See you in sequel. And it's the best joke because it ain't going to be a sequel, McGuinness. <laughs> <laughs> That's why it's on this podcast. My career, my face, my beautiful face. Let the bell be the end. I'll see you in the sequel. Right, so that happens. He has a change of heart. Turns out um, Vern Troyer is an angel. Because reasons. Because reasons. He then flies... Keith Lemon to Evil Steve. Yep. Drops him on Evil Steve. That's Evil Steve done with. Michael or- Douglas Orange comes in as Rambo and knocks himself out. He hits his head, goes boom. Mm. Yep. He Took makes some six noises. Takes. Six takes to run in a room and hit something. God. <laughs> Kevin Bishop, professional actor. Professional comedy actor. <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Did he owe a life debt to Lee Francis? <laughs> Bloody hope so. <laughs> I hope he's free now. That's the Be hope. free, Dobby Francis. Uh, whatever. Close enough. Kevin Bishop. I oh. So that happens, and he, he like what is it that he makes like some he makes some noises with his mouth to make his girlfriend be all right with marrying him. Yeah. Yeah, right. Oh. Yeah, she's tied up over a bubbling vat of molten metal. Me- metal, I think. Yeah, and he, she knows that he's got off with Kelly Brook, and he asks her to marry him. She says no, but in order to, co- to convince her to marry him, he goes makes noises. Yes, and then she goes. Yeah, okay, I'll marry you because you can make a noise. <laughs> you make a honk noise. <laughs> that is the... Keith Lemon is a children's character who, for whatever reason, tells potato jokes. I'm gonna pour. Some, I'll pour some out. Pour some out. Because you're drinking. I am very clearly drinking. So then the like, movie ends. The movie four, just a ends. Four, a four-year-old. <laughs> Would watch Keith Lemon and go, Ah, oh, he's got shaving foam on his face. Ah, <laughs> oh, listen to the noise he makes with his mouth. <laughs> Mummy, the silly man is silly. Why is he talking about jizz? What is jizz? <laughs> Why is it all over him? Oh, God. What Mummy, a can, bad movie. can we make better tonight? Again, not a movie. <laughs> what a bad images. <laughs> a bad series of moving images. The one hour and 16 minute movie. That's post credit. Feels like an eternity. And yes, it has post credits. And it has the audacity to add a honking blooper reel. And not even the bloopers are funny. Of course not. No. But uh, by that point. People mucking up is you, you usually get something. By that point, you are you're done with this movie. You're you've gone through anger, through resentment, through blind fury. And through disgust, and you're just, you're at pity. And that's all you've got left of this film, is pity. Pity that anyone had to be involved with this. Why did That Lee Francis agent, thought this was a good idea. No one's agent should have let them go through with this. No. They, everyone involved here has a bad agent who is not looking out for their best interest. <laughs> I have a question. Go for it. Shoot, sure. maybe Commentary Corner can <laughs> help with where does this movie fall in with the Keith Lemon canon? <laughs> okay. Because the character, because Keith Lemon hosts like three or four show. TV shows. Yeah. All right, so primarily he's a talk show, right? Primarily. He's, he's, he's a panel show. He's got a sketch show, a panel show, uh, through the keyhole, which is like yeah. light, light entertainment. Uh, but yeah, he's got all these TV shows. And in, in the movie, he get, he just goes back to being sort of poor business owner, marries his girlfriend, has three kids. But I don't think on any of these TV shows, the fact that he is married and has three kids, sells security poles, knows an angel. The un- is that ever mentioned? 
it's mentioned in the commentary because the commentary we're receiving is from Keith Lemon from the movie. So that is Keith Lemon's girlfriend. That's the running gag in the commentary, is that she's a real person and not an actress. So the commentary does not once answer where this falls in the Lemon canon. No, but I think it. I I think that in this film he doesn't have that chat show. He doesn't have anything because he's. It's not. He doesn't recognise the celebrities as friends and acquaintances. So is this movie set before all the TV shows? No, I th- because it I'm can't because Jedward is in it. It's I'm a, a post Jedward world. world. I'm guessing it's a, like almost a separate timeline. That's. I think that's what it's supposed to be. Okay. So this is this is an alternate universe. Yes. Where the only difference is Lemon doesn't have a TV show and iPhones haven't been invented. Yes. Lemon the duck. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, what the junk is this movie <laughs> what the J it's an awful film it's, an, it's a, an awful awful film I hate you for it it's awful misogynistic homophobic reprehensible shit and pour some mu- 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 drink out <laughs> like not e- like not even to be curious as to what this movie is just don't watch it don't watch it. Don't watch it. I'm going to go snap this. the disc, and that'll be that. How am I sticking in the microwave, actually? Snap it. Right. I, 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 <laughs> you have my full blessing to do whatever you want to do. You I want to almost it? wrapped it up and returned it to you today. I, I paid good <laughs> money for it, but destroy no, it. No, not good money. No. <laughs> Was it three quid? I, pa- I paid ill-gained money for it. <laughs> what other facts you got for me, Lewis? Well, like I said, I mean, this movie was 3.5, 3.7 out of 5 on Amazon. Mm. I wanted to find some, like, excellent reviews for you, and there's not really many. I can give you a couple of chuckly ones, if, you, if you'd like. Are they better uh, than the film? Anything's better than the film, isn't it? Feels, a, feels time. Like Keith Lemons in a monologue. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, then. Right. What you got for me? This is one from Jules. Mm-hmm. Uh, from 2013. Funny. <laughs> I'm not done. I'm well, not done. Be. It's just a long pause. Right. Funny. Keith Limmon. <laughs> Keith Limmon. <laughs> Keith Limmon. <laughs> no. <laughs> Need I say more? I mean, you said nothing. Great, great gift. <laughs> Great gift and entertaining if you're into Keith Lemon. <laughs> How's he spelling that? L-E. Yeah. M. Yeah. M. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> M. <laughs> Lemon. <laughs> Five stars. Oh, it's not as if the name's in the blooming title. Um, it's not as if you can scroll up and see the actual <laughs> box art. This is by Mray. Mm-hmm. Arrived quickly, but didn't really like the film. Not as good as I expected. I'm sorry. This is by Mray. Arrived quickly. Not cutting that. But didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Again! Didn't. Arrived quickly. Is this by Mray? It's by Mray. <laughs> <sighs> Did it arrive on time? <laughs> Shut up. It's not as good as this now. It's by Umre. Arrived quickly, but didn't really like the film. Not as good as I expected it to be seen it once. And that was enough. We'll probably sell it on four stars. <laughs> oh, yeah, he wants to sell it, doesn't he? <laughs> No punctuation. <laughs> Better to be bought off of. Mm. Oh, man. That was Keith Lemon, the film. Okay. you got one more thing to do for us, though. Would you like to know why Keith Lemon... Keith Lemon. <laughs> Would you like to know why it is a false start? Would you like me to tell you? Yes. Please you... tell me it's not just because of the Paddy McGuinness line. No, it's you, not. You need to explain to me why you sat me through. Since it is because had... of the Paddy McGuinness line. I'm just going to go mental and kill you now. I had no idea that the Paddy McGuinness line was going to be in it. So that is, that's a little sweet little cherry on top. Settle in. 
Let me take you on a, <sighs> let me take you on a journey. Go on. July two, me. July 2012. A month before the release of this movie. Lemon tells the Belfast Telegraph that work on a sequel is already underway. That it's called Keith Lemon 2. And he'd like Michelle Keegan and Cheryl Cole in it. Of course he would. June 2013. A year after. The Metro interviews Keith Lemon. And he says, next year I'll be doing another film. But I'm not allowed to talk about it yet, so I won't. January. A, a, a Keith Lemon film or just a film in general? Doesn't say. Just says next year I'm doing another film. I'm not allowed to talk about it, so I won't. January 14th, 2014. This is six months on. 11.30 a.m. Lemon replies on Twitter to this tweet. At Lemon Twitter. What can we expect from you over the next year? Maybe a new movie? Last one was epic. Hashtag Lemon Phone. Lies. That's lies. He replies, movie is all written. That's all he replies. Did he tweet that to himself? It's possible. Okay. 2015 National TV Awards, where Keith Lemon's Celebrity Juice... Beat Game of Thrones for the best multi-channel series. Shut up. It did. Shut up. It did. Better writing. <laughs> Lemon says that the movie is written and ready to shoot when we have time. April 5th, 2016. Now, this has been four years already since the first update. <laughs> God. The Sun newspaper reports that Lee Francis, the actor who plays Keith Lemon, revealed, I'll be doing another film next year in 2017. And he adds... It'll be a different direction. I know what I'm doing. And then there's nothing. <laughs> April 5th, 2016. There's nothing. No news for nearly two years. Mm. Until February 22nd of this year. Year of our Lord, 2018. Post Jedward. Post Jedward. Post Jedward. When? Twid Twiddly Diddly Deep at Diddly Diddly Deep on Twitter tweets <clears throat> at Keith Lemon. I made this account just to ask you, is there any news on the movie sequel? Feels like I've been hearing about it for years. Keith Lemon responds, No. <laughs> <laughs> There's only fingers in pie. There's only her fingers in pies, though. But film stuff takes ages. At Diddly Diddly Deep is me. Uh, so this... <laughs> <laughs> you actually were lost in... <laughs> Jesus. I went and made a Twitter mm -hmm. to ask Keith Lemon. You have a Twitter. I went and made another Twitter at Diddly Diddly Deep. Diddly Diddly Deep. Yeah, it's my name is Twiddly Diddly at Diddly Diddly Deep. <laughs> <laughs> I made it just to ask Keith Lemon when can we expect the movie. So this is technically a news exclusive <laughs> for Full Starts Podcast. <laughs> Well, uh, another news exclusive being that Keith Lemon is a delusional man and for some reason still thinks this sequel is getting made. <laughs> and once again, we're safe in saying that because he's a fictional character. Defamation of character doesn't exist. Well, so that is all the news on any potential sequel to the Keith Lemon film from 2012 to present day. Thank you for your in-depth journey journalism. You are. Okay. Very can I, welcome. Can I just give a, a, a shout out there to Commentary Corner for giving such wonderful insight. <laughs> Thank you, Commentary Corner. Where would we be? From two people <laughs> who worked on this series of images that happened to be 24 frames a second. Who I'm sure, because I know this was this guy's first directorial piece. So they these two were just probably mates just talking about rubbish. And then Sam Raimi turned up and they went, yeah, we can make a film out of that. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, I think it's time. Time's the time for sequel pitches. Huzzah! Huzzah! Actually, you know what? Before we do sequel pitches, let's. Shall we just make Dan drink what he's got? Yeah. Let's let. Like it's me. There's, Dan there's no... swore the most during that. He Yay. purposely swore as much as he could up top. Dan, you've got to pour this into your drink. Okay, you guys got to give me a moment. I've drunk. I've got to. Right. 
What's, what what are you pouring yeah, out, Dan? Yeah. What are you pouring out into your big cup there? Uh, there is gin and tonic. Mm-hmm. There is pims. There's now a lot of alcohol on my chair. Mm. And on a charging thing. Ashley, what will so, you be adding to it? Um, whatever was in the halftime one, and also gin and tonic. Okay. And then added to that, disgusting gin and pink grapefruit. I'm gonna have a little. Have a little. Go on. Right. Can, can yeah. I uh, can I have a crack? Pulls that? the gums back, doesn't it? I'll tell you what, though. Instead of a Bloody Mary, have that for a hangover. Mm. Actually, see, I can manage that on my own. You reckon? Yeah. Yeah. And mix it all together. That's a pint. I got, got a there. pint. It really is. <laughs> hey, can you pass that back? I need to try and clear this up a little bit. <laughs> so, who wants to go first then? Who wants to go for a sequel pitch first? Right. As the host of this episode, I will. I decree that Ashley goes first. Okay. Ashley, give us your sequel pitch. I'd save me to last, by the way. For Keith Lemon. I've got a prop. He, he had, what? What? What do, you mean you've, what do you mean you've got a prop? It's got a prop. Prop. I don't <laughs> like this. Has the prop got a lemon on back? Fuck off. <laughs> Lewis, I'm scared. I don't like that he has a prop. I don't like this at all. This all is, right, guys. This is not part of the deal. Take that away from the mic. I got a prop. He's got a prop. Let me tell you a story. It's an it's a, like auditory medium. Yeah. It's a proper pitch. We can describe prop. Get it? Okay. Did you get it? Guys, guys, did you get it? It's it's a proper pitch. Let him do his sequel pitch. Oh. You poo poo face. Keith Lemon 2, Electric Boogaloo. Oh! Bah, bah, bah. Theme song. You could have used Oosh. Oosh, bang tidy. So, opening scene Keith Lemon's having a wonderful bang tidy time at home with his new missus. And bing bong goes the doorbell. You got bloody thing at the door. Right. Um, opens the door. Who up, Who else is it than his good old mate and business partner, Kushwinder? Hey, hey. Kushwinder. Because Kushwinder's spent all his lemon phone money oh. on, I don't know, some racist stuff. Um, a spicy condom that burns your vag and your nuss. Jesus. Actually, I mean, <laughs> I know you're pitching a sequel to Keith Lemon and that is exactly what they do, yeah. but Jesus. Um, so his latest business venture has <coughs> left him bankrupt. So now he's come to his bestest buddy for his inspiration. And he says that Keith Lemon is so great. You can always get these great marketing tips and inspiration from Keith Lemon. Wouldn't it be great if you could just box him up? And Keith Lemon's like, Wow. What if there was a Keith Lemon box? <laughs> and Kushwin is like, no. It's got lemon on back. Yes! <laughs> Host. It's his face. This is his box. <laughs> oh my. Oh my god! Dan, describe it. Okay, so f- that's the I like, back. Like, <laughs> there is a it's box. Got a lemon on it. <laughs> He's wrapped up in Keith Lemon <laughs> wrapping paper. For what I can see, here, we've got. I can see. Have a bang tidy birthday and love. What was it love? Love, love, love from Keith. Keith. Love Keith. Oh mate, it's because it's, it's my birthday recently. It's got yeah. something on the front, and I have no idea what it's got on Go the front. Read, it. read, read the card on the front. Oh, what's, what's it the say? card on the front says, it's a lemon box. It's a Keith Lemon box. <laughs> the full name. <laughs> <laughs> so what I does he do with this lemon box? I don't want to open it. because. Right, I'll, I'll finish off, then you can open it. What? Go on. Go on. Go on. Not actually, what I'm saying is in the box is not in that box. <laughs> okay. Okay, so what's in this God, lemon box? So, delicate so I've also got a story about it. Um, he's, so, yeah, it's so good that he could have a box of Keith Lemon stuff. So, again, this gets really popular because, of course, he's got Lemon on back. So, Keith loses himself again and he, he, he tries to set him up this time as like a godlike figure. Mm. And he's, he's literally sharing himself with the world. 
but how would Keith Lemon do that? So we see Keith Lemon losing himself. <laughs> we, we, we see Keith Lemon losing himself, and we, he's, like, he's obviously like losing his health as well. So <laughs> yeah. um, basically, we find out through humorous means <laughs> Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, silly. Hell. <laughs> what, you, what did you say? We find out through humorous means that Keith Lemon has been <laughs> providing 10 cc's of his own semen in each box. And of course, the world goes crazy and another mob runs at him, just like it's, it's a rhyme. It's a circle. It rhymes. It's the same as the first film. But, but this time, but... Vern Troyer, the angel, flies down and picks him up and rescues him. And they fly off into the credits. And then they make humorous notes over the bloopers. <laughs> the end. <laughs> <laughs> right. So he got him a Keith Lemon wig and mustache. Listeners. <laughs> and I see a book in there. Let me tell you what was in at Keith Lemon box that Ashley has made. Then I'll tell you me. what should have been in there. Give, give, I mean, I gave some detail, but give more. It was my birthday a couple of weeks ago. Oh, shit, I'm your or, birthday. A week or so ago. I need to get you a present. Damn. And this is my present from Ashley. <laughs> he has bought me a Keith Lemon wig. And Keith Lemon the box open. That's... And a book. And... A book. The book is written in the style of Keith Lemon by Keith Lemon, like in like the way he speaks. Little Keith Lemon, memoirs of my childhood. Oh well, that was that was quite the pitch. Did you listen to it? I did listen to oh, it. Oh, good. At least someone did. Lewis, what's your pitch? I tell you in a second. I'm taking a photo of myself <laughs> for the tweeters. <laughs> the tweeters. I can selfie. Can you? No. <laughs> <laughs> I've try, I'm Sorry. trying to think who you look like because it's not Keith Hulk Lemon. Hogan. Hulk Hogan. It's Hulk Hogan. <laughs> Which you all already dressed up for your stag. Yeah. <laughs> right. What's he go? Oosh. 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 There you go. That'll go up on Twitter. <laughs> God, this wig is boiling. Is it st- it <laughs> Super glued. <laughs> Strawberry blonde. Right. All right, go on then. Give us your pitch. Sequel pitch. Keith Lemon, the movie. Keith Lemon, two. Keith wakes up in hospital, surrounded by busty nurses in suspenders. Where are my wife and kids? Oh, Keith, you've been in a coma. You don't have a wife and kids. You're still in a coma. Keith wakes up in hospital again, surrounded by realistic nurses in tunics and trousers because we live in the real world. <laughs> and everything that happened in the first movie was part of Keith's coma. I'm spy who shagged me in this joint. A clean slate. Mm-hmm. The inciting incident in this movie, movie is Keith Lemon, millionaire flagship star of ITV, says something live on air that is too much, even for a Keith Lemon. And he loses everything. His deal with ITV, his house, he hits rock bottom. He needs to reinvent himself. So he flees the country and goes to Greece. And half of this movie plays out uh, like The Trip. Mm. You know, with Steve Coog and Rob Brydon. Yeah, yeah. It's just Keith Lemon having dinner, taking an introspective look at himself. When he sees on Greek TV, it's on mute in a bar in Greece, that Paddy McGuinness has taken over Celebrity Juice. And he's made it really dour and colourless. And Keith Lemon decides that something must be done. So he has to sneak back into the country. And the next half of the movie, first half was a trip, next half of the movie is Children of Men. (laughs) (laughs) The country see Keith as a hate figure. And word is he's back on British soil. So Keith has to make his way through the country to, to ITV London Studios, which he does. And gets onto the Celebrity Juice set. And while it may look dour and colourless, the audience love it. They're roaring with laughter. And the finale of the movie, it's just the end of Network. Keith gets in front of the cameras, makes a big speech, apologises for being a shit and retires. (laughs) The end of the movie, the end of Keith Lemon, and an apology. 
for Keith Levin. <laughs> <laughs> and then he makes a new character. He's a, like a wheelchair-bound homophobe in blackface and the masses love it and he gets to present you've been framed or something. <laughs> and it's directed by Michael Winterbottom. The end. Keith Lemon 2. <laughs> I thought you were going to go... So he wakes up in a hospital, fake hospital, and he goes, oh, no, it was all a dream. Yeah, Keith Lemon, it was a dream. And then he wakes up in a real hospital, and they go, Lee Francis, I'm afraid we couldn't operate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm afraid the Keith Lemon tumour is still there. <laughs> <laughs> How's your drink, Dan? It's very alcoholic. I'm mm. feeling kind of bust. If I'm honest with you, I have to go work in the morning. Right, Dan. <sighs> yeah. Give me your pitch. Well, I refuse to put more effort into this pitch than the movie did. So I wrote a single line, and that line is Keith Lemon gets his head kicked in for 60 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> just, it's just a deleted scene. <laughs> just that. Yeah. Extended. That's all I wrote. Because I'm not going to put effort into this pitch. Do you have a title? I don't know. Do you know what? Keith Lemon gets his head kicked in for 60 minutes. <laughs> I tell you what. I tell you what happens, right? Here we go. Silly. Again, it's an episode of Celebrity Juice. It's going on, whatever. Comes back stage and goes, Keith, oh, I've got some you know, ratings for you. It turns out, <coughs> actually, silly. no one likes your show. You're not that funny. And he realise, wow, I really am not that funny. And so what he does is he cancels Keith Lemon. He goes into introspective look at himself and disappears from the face of life. And the movie ends. You just stole like the yeah. first half of my movie. And then he gets on a bus to London ITV Studios and he says, where are you going? I'm no, going to London. None of that. Where are you going? I'm going London. Yeah, there you go. There's my pitch. Right. So well, Keith go. Lemon, whatever the... F- Potato. Keith Lemon, good, whatever good the... Hoover f- nozzle. Vital. Ashley, what's your movie called? Keith Lemon 2 Electric Boogaloo. Naturally, and I'll just call it Keith Lemon 2. The Keith Lemon movie. Colon. The end. Okay. That was episode 10, yeah. everybody. In the bag. In the bag, I, I guess we'll wrap things up. Uh, you can vote for your favourite sequel pitch on Twitter. I'll put a link in the description or something. You can you know, remember to follow us at Full Starts Pod. Uh, like, share, subscribe. Maybe if you leave us a review as well, we'd start shouting you out for those maybe. Um, I'm Lewis. I was the host today. You can find me on Twitter at Ty's Beanie Babies, T-Y-S Beanie Babies. Dan, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Dan underscore Wookie. You know, I don't I post as much, but I am trawling on there. I'm always on there. So, Ash, where can we find you? I'm at Ash underscore Bronzebeard. And you can find us collectively as a podcast on Twitter at Full Starts Pod. Remember, uh, remember, if you want to find our old episodes, uh, they'll be going up on YouTube, uh, possibly with new content. So, you know, double dip people like The Hobbit, like you did with The Hobbit. Double dip. Double dip like you did with The Hobbit. Before we say goodbyes, uh, who's going it next week? Dan, it's you, right? It's me. It's you, episode 11. It is me. What you got for us? Uh, I think for what's coming out at the moment, um, I think Ghost Stories is coming out. Yes. I want, let, let's go see that. Yes. Oh, that's good. I'm going to be extra nice to you. Although I don't want to be. Can we see it in 4DX? Uh, no. I'll be extra nice to you. And the full start I'm picking I love you, Dan. is... Uh, it's a really good movie. I've, I've yet to see it, but I've heard good things about it. We're going to go see Rock and Roller. There's meant to be a sequel to that? Is that the oh, Guy Ritchie one? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, aye. There's meant to be a sequel. I've seen that, I think. You think? I think I've sure. seen it. I think. But we're going to watch that. Is that... Did he put Madonna in that one? <laughs> Probably. Madonna. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. We're going to okay. go watch that. Okay. We'll watch that. Ghost Stories and Rock and Roller. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's going to be a good month. Yeah, it's got to be better than this, isn't it? And then, then I'm going to, no, I'm going to wait. <laughs> I'm going to wait. We're going to have another bad circle, aren't we? Yeah. You're going to have another bad Christmas. If you get to do Christmas. <laughs> remember survive until Christmas. Remember what happened when you did Christmas last time. Mm. Yeah. Remember what my retaliation was. Remember I made you watch Keith Lemon the movie. Do you think that that's the worst movie I could do? Do you think Keith Lemon the movie is the worst movie I could do? I think it is. Probably. Yeah. <laughs> Let's say bye-byes. All right. Bye-bye, guys. Take care. Bye, everybody.
Hello everyone, it's um, Lewis here again. You'll have heard in the podcast, if you listened to it all, that we were struggling to find the production budget for Keith Lemon, the, the, the film. And luck, as luck would have it, Ashley bought me the Keith Lemon autobiography for my birthday, and I've, I've been reading through it. I've been, I've, I've been turning it in, into an audiobook for Dan and Ashley, so that I'm not alone having to listen to it. But the production budget for the film is in there. And Keith Lemon himself says that the production budget for the movie was £2.1 million. Pounds. But I think... I mean, he also says that the movie grossed £10 million, pounds, which, as you know from the podcast, is not true. Um, that £2 million pounds doesn't show up on screen. So I think, I think we can assume it was embezzled by Keith Lemon, who is a fictional character. So, once again, say whatever the fuck I want about him. Ah! Drink! <laughs>